drab afternoon in Ann Arbor. Drab weather-wise, that is, but temperature-wise, it's perfect for football. Certainly, the Michigan fans, better than 100,000, hoping it will not be a drab day for the Wolverines on the playing surface. Hello, everybody. I'm Ray Lane, along with Jim Bramstetter and the fourth number two in the Big Ten chase, the Hoosiers of Indiana. They have trouble with an offense. Yeah, they do. They really don't have much of an offense. Uh, Northwestern beat them last week, but they have one weapon. Name Dwayne Gunn. He probably is the best athlete at a skilled position in the conference. The only problem with Dwayne Gunn, we watched him in pregame. He's had some injury problems, and it looks like maybe he's got a little trouble with his left knee. How effective will he'll be this afternoon? We won't know until game time. But if Dwayne Gunn is out there and playing well, Indiana does have a game breaker on offense, and he's the guy they've got to get the ball to in order to stay close to Michigan because he can make the big play, and it's one thing Michigan must not afford. Give Indiana the big play to Dwayne Gunn. Meanwhile, the offense for Michigan, oh, what a fine running game. Kerry Smith, Rick Rogers, Brian Mercer, Eddie Garrett, Steve Smith, you name them. They've got all great running backs, and on a day that is overcast and there is some rain threatening, I expect we'll see Michigan keep it on the ground, much like they did last week against Wisconsin, and really try to beat Indiana up up front. And historically, Indiana hasn't been good in the defensive line, and that may be the game plan this afternoon. We'll see a charging chorus of Wolverine backs again. Well, we'll look for it. We'll have that opening kickoff in just a moment. To get this ball game underway, the Wolverines of the University of Michigan will be kicking off, and those duties, of course, belong to Todd Schlopey, number 99, the senior from Orchard Park, New York, as he gets all set to tee it up in front of the referee, Glenn Fortin. We'll check out that official crew a little bit later on. So Schlopey to start it off, and the deep man for Indiana, number 30 is Bobby Howard, number 29, Alex Green, and with these new Indiana uniforms, that cream-colored traveling uniform and the red numbers, a little tough to pick up. But our opening kickoff is underway, and a spiral going down to the goal line, picked off by Howard. He gets up to the 15-yard line, tries to crack it up the middle, and is stripped up close to the 18-yard line. on his first return of the 1983 season as far as kickoff's concerned. Scarcelli gets credit for that tackle for Michigan. Um, Jim out of Warren, Michigan, a junior who attended Warren Woods High School. Well, we'll see a lot of movement and possibly uh, a lot of formations from the Hoosiers this afternoon as they slide it off of the slot. And going out now to the wide receiver, the split in, Len Killebrew. And Killebrew comes up for reception his 13th of the year. And Johnny Lott over there to make the stop. Indiana's offensive line. And not a great bit of experience on that right side. But big, weighing 270 pounds as an average. The backfield, Steve Bradley, a youngster. Howard and Salters get some pretty good speed. The receivers, probably the strongest part that they have in their offensive uh, unit. Pitch to the right side, and coming in there is Alex Green, freshman out of Illinois, Clint Allen, and Mike Bourne right over there in a hurry to greet him. Both Bourne and Mallory coming over real quick from their linebacker's position, and we expect Indiana to do a lot of throwing. It's kind of a surprise here that a quick pitch to try to get Green outside. There you see Bourne coming over along with Mallory. Both inside backers got outside on the corner real quick. They bring their tight end, McNabb, over to the right side and start him in motion. Second down and nine. And that went out to Alex Green, completed, gets the first down and run out of the bounds on the far side of the field, close to the Indiana 44. And again, John Lott leading the way over there. Healed it also in on the tackle. One of the keys to Indiana successfully offensively this afternoon, I think, as we see early, is they've got to sh throw the little short pass and force Michigan back off the ball a little bit, and then they'll try to run some. But I think most of the time, we'll see the ball in the air. Well, you see a little bit of a change here in the linebackers on defense for Michigan as Carlton Rose gets the start. 25 yards picked up so far by Indiana on a couple of passes. And coming on a crisscross that time. Is that gun? 
and was for his first reception, Mike Mallory, in there to make the stop. At. So Gunn comes up with his 18th catch of the year. He has been the busiest man as far as receiver. Well, you can see why Gunn is such a good receiver. This ball is not thrown real well. He adjusts to the ball behind him and makes the catch going down. Real good catch by Gunn, and Indiana doing real well offensively here in that first series. Got nine yards on that completion. It's second down and one. And a little delay movement that time. Walsh on the carry, the fullback, and cracks down to the Michigan 35-yard line. Well, they have plenty of daylight that time on the left side. Indiana's doing better against Michigan here in his first drive on the ground than they did all last week against Northwestern. This is a simple draw play. Michigan is coming, and they kick it in, and Walsh breaks it outside, and the block is on Kevin Brooks that allowed Walsh to get outside. So Michigan defensively has got to sh sharpen up inside because Indiana has been hitting them with a little short pass on first down, then coming back with a good run on second and short. But I've got first and ten right now as McNabb goes in motion for Indiana. And almost intercept. Broken up in there by Mike Mallory. Rule incomplete. The Michigan defender got the ball, and he didn't catch it on the fly. I think the ball hit a leg. It never hit the ground, Ray. Popped up, and Mike Bourne made the interception, but the referee is ruling the ball's incomplete. The ball probably shouldn't have been thrown in here because he throws right between two linebackers. Now watch the ball bounce. Does it hit the ground? It hits Bourne's back, and it lands on his leg. It never did hit the ground, so that is an interception. The referee saw it hit the ground. Second and ten, and a flag goes down on the 30-yard line. Almost a 10-yard carry going up the middle that time, and on that carry was Jack Walsh, their senior fullback. Great balance by Walsh. You saw him put his hand down on the ground to keep his balance. He was knocked down and tripped at the line of scrimmage, but got nine yards just really keeping his balance with his left hand on the ground. The Hoosiers, in addition to their passing, they've been able to find some daylight in that line so far, a little bit unusual. So the Wolverines are going to have to tighten things up. They'll bring it back, and now they're going to march it off from the line of scrimmage for a five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Too many men on the field, Ray. It's a five-yard penalty, so Weiss takes the five yards, and now he's looking at a second down and five. I don't know why he didn't take the run. It would have been second and one. Is that correct? Well, one or two, yep. So they would have gone a third down. Oh, okay. They would have gone the third down. All right, second and five for the Hoosiers. And Bradley goes over the top, hurry that time, and put it into the turf for an incompleted pass. Cooper covering on that play. And again, Gunn coming over the middle. And Green, that was Green, actually, number 29, coming over the middle, the tailback. I think you're right, though, when you said that he was getting some pressure. Bradley, the quarterback, is a good, big, strong kid, but Michigan has got to put some pressure on him, and I think we saw the results of some pressure there. They didn't get back close enough to sack him, but forced him to throw it early, and he threw a bad ball. Third and five, Green and Walsh, the running back, stop for Indiana. Benson in motion, the fullback carrying goes nowhere, and coming up there in a hurry to greet him, Felice was last week's defensive champion of the week. And take a look from the left side of your screen. He's playing that left tackle. Here's the draw, and Felice stays right at home, beats the block, and that was Kevin Brooks also in there to help out. But Felice was the guy coming in there real strong, beating the block at the line of scrimmage. Now we got a long field goal try from the Hoosiers. Okay, this is Doug Smith. He's going to try for a 47 yarder. All the way marked to the 37 yard line. He has a 47 yard field goal to his credit this year, and that was against Kentucky in the second game of the year. Last week, missed on 47 yards against Northwestern. This time, he is off to the right and no good. So the Hoosiers attempt to get three. It won't go, and Michigan will have the ball at its own 20-yard line. They'll score with 11.50 to go. I left a big company to turn my hobby into my living. Here come the Wolverines for the first play of the line of scrimmage. This afternoon's ball game. But it's Sim Nelson in motion. And on the carry and a lot of daylight. Moving with Rick Rogers. And Rogers carries across the 40-yard line. Very close to the first 
down. Take a look at the replay here. Milt Carthens is the tight end in motion, 83. Now he will kick out on the linebacker. Right there is the block, and that allows Rodgers to cut it back up inside. Nelson, Sim Nelson, gets a block on two people before Hendrickson can come up and make the stop. Good play on a first down by the Wolverines. On Cattis, or rather on Carthens, good block. We saw Jeff McBain really cut down. That was first and ten on that carry by the Wolverines. And up to around the 42, maybe the 43-yard line. Picked up a couple of yards. Flying down. As you can the offensive line stay the same. Eddie Garrett got the start at fullback this afternoon. And the receiver. Say that we've seen the past three weeks. Second down at eight. Rodgers, the running backs for the Wolverines. And Steve Smith for the first time going to the air. And he is long, intended that time for his wide receiver, Giovanni Johnson. And overshot him by about five yards. Might have been a little mix up in the pattern, too. Yeah, well, I, you know, it also looked like Jeff McBain, their, their, their cornerback out there, was holding on to Giovanni. Uh, I don't know. Giovanni seemed to stop his pattern right in the middle. And it looked to me as though McBain had a pretty good hold on him. I'm surprised that we didn't get a call on that one. At left guard, the strong side, the Oriole back in there now. Belores comes out for Michigan. We've got third down and eight. They slot now the wing position. Rogers on the left side. And the draw coming up the middle. Smith has the first down to the 40 to the 35 yard line of Indiana. Just doing a little uh, toe dancing through the line of scrimmage. Found the big hole and got all the way down to the 35. Indiana, 23-yard game, finally brought down by Christopoli. Straight quarterback draw, good block by Diorio, clearing out Smith, their good defensive tackle. And there is Eddie Garrett, the fullback, gets a real good block again on that safety, number 43, Hendrickson, and Steve Smith just had a lot of room. The reason that play went, because it was well blocked. They moved Bean, the wide receiver, on the left side, Johnson to the right side. And the fake to Garrett, the pitch out of the option, going to Rogers around the right side. First down, gets back in, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Michigan. Rick Rogers rolling for 35 yards and has his fifth touchdown of the season on the ground. Got some good blocking from Bean and Nelson. Yes, he did. And watch the block here by Nelson. Right there, he's on the left side of your screen. Follows him and he finds gets Sigler down on the ground, and then that's a great cut by Rodgers, and another great cut behind the pursuit into the end zone. That is the key to the option, is that tight end blocking on the cornerback, because no runner worth his salt really should be tackled open field one-on-one. -on -one. Bob Bergeron to try for the extra point, as Michigan moves five, uh, 70 yards in five plays, and taking only a minute and 52 seconds to do it. set to go now as the officials had decided to take a little extra time and doing so again right now. Now wait a minute, we got a flag down now in the end zone of Indiana. A flag down, a late flag. After the touchdown run by Rogers, but prior to the attempt for the extra point. We haven't yet seen a signal from the official, so we don't really know what it is yet. Too many men on the field for Indiana. One called against Michigan that way a little bit earlier, and this time against Indiana. So Bergeron to try for the extra point. And he is perfect with it through the uprights, and Michigan now with a 7 to nothing lead in the opening quarter with 9.58 to go. Michigan all set to kick off, and again, it was a question, I think, coming in this ball game of whether Indiana could stop the rushing of Michigan, the ground game. And in this early moments of the first quarter, the Hoosiers did not. Slopey all set to kick off with Green and Howard back there to handle it. This will be Howard, about three yards deep in his end zone. And goes nowhere. Gets to the nine-yard line and a gang tackling by the Wolverines. 
Should have never tried to get it out of there, Ray, because uh, when you're three, four yards deep in the end zone, you don't return it. Let's take a look at the touchdown. Two keys to this play. Smith down the line. Here comes the end. He tries to tackle Smith. He get rid of the ball to Rodgers. Then number four for Indiana Sigler is blocked by Nelson, and Rodgers is able to split those two defensive backs, made a great cut back to the middle of the field, got him into the end zone. Good running, but the play was blocked really well at the corner. Alex Green and Walsh, the running backs behind Bradley for Indiana, gun the wide man on the left side. And going over the middle, and a nice catch that time by Kennebrew to split in. They lined up with three wide receivers on that left side. You can see that Sam Weiss, the coach at Indiana, is not afraid at all to go to the air in any position. Here Bradley's in the end zone, getting some decent rush, throws it into traffic, and that's just a great catch by Kennebrew. Michigan had fairly decent coverage, but the ball was thrown up there, and Kennebrew laid out to get it. First down of the 22 of Indiana, Kennebrew, a senior out of Robbins, Illinois. And now the little swing pass out to the tight end, Scott McNabb. McNabb got a couple of extra yards just by putting that head down in there. He had Hewlett beating him, and also Mike Boren around the bottom. Well, I think we're going to see a lot of that now. Uh, Indiana going to the pass. They'll go to it anywhere. We saw them come out of their own end zone with a pass. And the tight end screen is a play Michigan hasn't seen yet this year because they've played, they've played against teams that use the backs for their screens. And we take a look at Michigan going 70 yards, using only a minute and 52 to score their first touchdown. But the key again, all on the ground mostly and all outside with their big gainers. Second and three for the Hoosiers. Alex Green carries, goes nowhere. He is treated right at the line of scrimmage. Kevin Brooks comes up very quickly from that tackle spot on the right side. Also, it was Ford moving up and had some help in there also from DeFelice and Mallory. Michigan is second in the conference against the rush. And you can see that there just is no hole there. The linebackers are not being blocked by Indiana's up-front people. Indiana's up-front offensive line are very, very big, right? But they're not real mobile. And against a quick defensive line, which Michigan has, they're going to have their problems. All right, Terry Smith checks in the place of Benson at a wide receiver. But the pitch right now is going to Alex Green. And should have enough for the first down, close to the 34-yard line. Had to get up to around the 32 for that. Cochran drove him out of bounds. By the way, if you think you're going to see an aerial circus from Indiana, there's a good chance you will today. Because last week, Brad, the quarterback, a sophomore on Knox, Indiana, went to the air 44 times against the Wildcats of Northwestern and completed 21 of them. First and 10 at the 34 of Indiana. Michigan leads by a score of 7 of 8 14 to go in the opening quarter. Alex Green goes to that wing position on the right side now. He is the tailback. Picks up that time. Actually, he had his split in Kennebrew and he opened, but Kennebrew was not looking for the ball. Looked like they were running a crossing pattern, and Sam Weish is the former quarterback coach for the San Francisco 49ers, and a lot of his theory on offensive passing is the pick game where they're picking defensive linebackers it's illegal tactic in collegiate football you cannot do it but you try and if you get away with it and the officials aren't watching that can happen and that's what they tried to do there they just missed it pickle defense employed now by michigan five defensive backs in there and almost completed at the 50 yard line Down. Absolutely. Remember against Washington, Ray, Michigan's defensive backs were giving him so much room. Now watch how tight Lott is here on the wideout. He comes up, and as he gets his hands on the ball, there's Lott stripping his arms down, trying to stop him from making that catch. And that was Benson, the wideout, the backup to Dwayne Gunn, who was trying to make that catch. He probably should have made it. Bradley already having a fairly decent day, over 50% passing for 54 yards. Third ten of the Hoosiers, they are one for two in third down conversions. Firing low, and it was close to Gunn over there at the 44-yard line. The official claims it is a completion, and very close to a first down. But Gunn, with good quickness, he is not 100% coming in this ball game. But bad left leg on him, not moving like you can see him, but still makes those tough catches. Yeah, Gunn has had some ankle and knee troubles, and 
The problem there was is that you've got to give Dwayne Gunn some respect because he goes deep. He can beat you real seriously. So they'll give him a little bit more room. The ball thrown real well. Gunn adjusted really good, came back to the ball, made a great catch on the ground, and got enough for the first down. That's, that's a receiver because that ball was not thrown real well. And that's the kind of thing you expect from a big play receiver. Make that catch when it doesn't look like he should. Anthony Carter did it for four years here at Michigan, and Gunn's the same kind of player. That's what the Michigan coaches have been talking about all week. Gunn, the Anthony Carter type, the big play type. Don't let him have a big play against you. He's made two receptions, good for 19 yards thus far. First and 10 for the Hoosiers. And this time, Bradley keeps. One of the few times you'll see Bradley go up the middle like that. Sometimes he'll roll out on the option, but he gets a first down to the Michigan 45-yard line. Cooper and Hassel making the tackle. Well, that play was designed to go outside, but look at Mike Bourne. He reacts so quickly outside that Bradley read that, and he cut back inside over the center. Now, Mike Bourne has got to learn to stay home a little bit better because that will happen all day long. He can't just skate out of there. Hoosiers picked up their seventh first down. About to carry the fullback that time, Jack Walsh. Might have got about three yards out of that carry over left guard. Deep Elise in there along with Mike Bourne. So it'll go to second down and about uh, seven yards for the Hoosiers. If you just joined us, Michigan leading by a score of seven and nothing with seven minutes to go in the opening quarter. But most impressive, I think, Ray, is the fact that Indiana offensively has moved the ball fairly successfully against the Michigan defense. Well, we talk about the first-year coach, Sam Weish, of course, of the Hoosiers. Boy, he had them in contact and drilled Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday after their pitiful, uh, pitiful performance against Northwestern. Flat goes down on that carry by the Hoosiers, getting close to the 35-yard line of Michigan. And on the carry was Bobby Howard. Gant in there to make a stop along with Cochran. Holding against Indiana. You know, one of the things we wondered about coming into this game, Ray, was what Indiana would react like after Sam Weiss really blistered them in the media. He said we had some rotten apples on this club. He said that some of them just didn't want to play. And you wonder, a team can do one of two things. They can either lay down and, you know, the season is gone, or they can get emotionally aroused and get ready to play. I think in this instance, at least from the early part, of this game, I think that we've seen Indiana react favorably to what Weish was talking about back in the Monday afternoon press conference when he ripped his players. I'll tell you, there was a lot of eyebrows raised after he made those strong comments about his young players of the Hoosiers. Weish in his first season after four years as an assistant coach for the San Francisco 49ers. So they go to second down now and 17 for the Hoosiers. Bradley going to the air and broken up by Cochran. Intended that time for Terry Smith and Cochran doing a good job flicking that ball away. Got a hand up there. They were covering with a two deep coverage. Cochran had the receiver short and then he trails him and coming over was Cooper from his safety position. But good reaction by Cochran. He looked, he reacted to the ball, got his hand up to bat it away. Coming into this ball game, the Wolverines in the Big Ten on pass defense, fourth in the conference. Indiana fifth on defense against that pass. And passing situation right now, third and 17, as Bradley looks for one of his receivers. Going deep, and Jennifer Gunn intercepted by Mallory, and Mallory goes down at his own 34-yard line. Young Mike Mallory comes up with a second interception of the 83 season. Against a team like Indiana that you know is going to throw a lot, linebackers are key that they drop back and get deep drops. Here's a deep post by Gunn. Shouldn't have thrown the ball because it was into traffic again. There you see Mallory playing the zone, just stepped over in front of Gunn in that zone coverage. There was no crease there. There was no spot in the zone that was open. Mallory just stepped in front. Easy interception. Michigan makes their own break for the second time in this game. Well, as you can see the shot from our stands uh, with all the Michigan fans on hand. A very comfortable day here. Weather-wise, it's been comfortable for Michigan thus far. Leading 7-0 with 621 to go in the opening quarter. First and 10, and now they put Rodgers in the eye formation. We might have some reverse. Reverse coming around, and this time it's Steve Johnson on a carry. He's still bound. Flag goes down, and Johnson gets down to around the 48-yard line of Indiana. The flag is for a block below the waist, Ray. Steve Smith had to make a block 
I'm not sure who it was for Indiana. It might have been Mark Smith, their big tackle. But you've got to block four yards on the other side of the line of scrimmage above the waist. And that is the call. It's on Steve Smith. Good play going. And Bo Schembechler is extremely upset because he's, I think, just got another call against him. I'm not sure. But watch. Smith is coming. Right there is the block below the waist. And that is a penalty, and Bo is extremely upset because I think they tacked an extra one on to him. I think he was discussing it with the side judge down there on the call. And you're absolutely right. They've knocked off some more yardage and put that ball all the way back to the 17, between the 17 and 18 yard line of Michigan. Illegal block. And Bo really hot and heavy out there. You know, that's the interesting thing about Bo. You know, he's got Indiana, a team that is not expected to against him. You want to talk about a guy who's intense about any game he plays? Bo thinks these guys are UCLA or Southern Cal or Nebraska. First and 26. And on the carry, uh, maybe a yard, two yards at the most. A little draw play going up the middle. And Rogers on the carry. Rogers now with that ball at the 18-yard line. Rogers, of course, the fellow with a 35-yard gallop for the first touchdown. Bo also trying to maybe just sort of hype up his team a little bit. Just trying to get him a little more fired up. Could be. Second and 26. Boy, Smith with a lot of time. Goes to Rogers at the 20-yard line, 25, 26-yard line. You can see Smith looking for his deep men. Couldn't find anybody. Decided to go to his tailback coming out of the backfield. Well, Indiana defensively playing kind of a prevent in a situation where you're first and 26. They'll give up that underneath pattern, but they won't give that 15 to 18-yard pass. So the wideouts were covered extremely well. You know, the other thing I think Bo might have been mad about in that play with Steve Smith is that the... The defender saw Smith blocking him and went down to accept the block, and Smith got as low as he could. I don't know whether that's actually a block below the waist. Third and 18, and Smith hits his man at the 50-yard line into Indiana territory, and that was Vince Bean, the young man out of Southfield. This is the same pattern against the same defense that Indiana ran a moment ago that Brad Cochran knocked down. Smith goes back. Vincent Bean just runs a straight fly pattern down the sideline. He beats the underneath man, but he doesn't pick his hand up, and he's in front of the safety Hendrickson. That is the seam that Michigan found that Indiana couldn't find in the pass that Cochran knocked down. Well, first down at the 49 of Indiana, Bean with his sixth reception of the 1983 season. He stays in there, and he is on the far side, the top of your screen, split wide. Garrett and Rogers, the running backs. And Smith couldn't find anybody, wanted to run. Loses about four, and a flag goes down on that melee down there. Nice job. The nose guard in there to grab the first. I think what happened is we got a face mask penalty. It'll be inadvertent. Indiana came with a blitz to the strong side of the formation. Normally, Indiana only blitzes to the weak side or the split end side. And apparently, Michigan couldn't figure that out because they weren't seeing it in practice enough. The referee going over and explaining to Sam Weiss exactly what the penalty is. Inadvertent face mask, I believe. Smith got caught in that blitz and couldn't get free. But the tackler, Zeista, made the pull on the face mask, and that's a penalty. Can't do it. Indiana coming to this ball game while that conversation still goes on with the official, the referee, Clint Fort. And uh, Sam Weiss, Indiana, gets the rush. 79 a game. Again, that look at that last play. Uh, you see, they came from the strong side. They had two people on the strong side blocking the blitzer. Now, here is the hand of 53, says that. Comes in. The left hand is on the face mask, and that is the penalty call. It's only five yards for inadvertent penalty, but it's inadvertent grabbing of the face mask, but it gives Michigan a first down and eight. The Oreo comes out of there at guard for Michigan. Valoris back in there. That might have brought a play in. Michigan in good shape now with first down and nine yards. Instead of taking that loss, thanks to that penalty. A little toss now going out to Rogers. A lot of daylight over there. Cuts back in. Gets to the 35-yard line. Boy, the defense was strung out on that left side, and Rogers trying to cut back in to beat a couple of men. Once again, real good blocking by the tight end, Sim Nelson. 
Smith is forced to pitch immediately because that tight end is coming up real fast. Then Rogers uses his speed to get outside, and there's 95 Nelson knocking down Sigler. Now Sigler gets in on a tackle, but Nelson blocked him back off the ball five yards. You don't mind when a guy comes off a block seven yards down the field to make a tackle. First and 10 for Michigan, double tight end now as Caddis joins Nelson in there at the tight end position. B closing up the gap a little bit on the right side. Garthens in motion, but instead the carry to the fullback. This is Garrett straight ahead, has the first down inside the 25. Block, the interior linebacker, breaking it down. Uh, Michigan's doing a great job of play calling. They hit him outside with the option. Now they come back right inside the fullback. He reads the block of the middle guard sees that the center has taken the middle guard to the right and Garrett cuts it back over the block. Good for good yardage and another Michigan first down. 3.33 to go in the opening quarter. Michigan on a march again, leading seven to, uh, to nothing. That ball now at the 24-yard line. Little reverse option that time. Steve Smith carries and gets down inside the 15-yard line. Bean doing a good job of the block that time. And once again, you see Michigan after getting the big gainer up through the middle. They come back outside. Indiana was stacked up to stop the fullback, stop the off-tackle play. Michigan kicks it outside. They caved in the entire left side of the Indiana line. Smith had good room outside to make nine. Just inside that 15-yard line. And need a short yard for the first down. Might have had some movement by Garrett. He carries. He's down close inside the five. The flag goes down as Garrett goes to the two. Boy, I thought he got off to a quick start that time. We'll see what the call is. Motion by Michigan. And Garrett seemed to be moving just a little bit. So Michigan offensively is a little bit like a boxer here today, right? You know how they work the body and then go back upstairs to the head? Michigan is doing the same thing. They hit him back inside over the center and guard, guard hole, get good yardage through there, then they come back outside. Back and forth, back and forth. Indiana defensively has got to be guessing a little bit, and Michigan's catching them in that guess. And when they catch him right, the play goes for good yardage. So that'll be second down now, the five-yard penalty to the Wolverines for motion. That'll be second down and six. Garrett and Rogers in there, but Steve Smith wants to go to the air, bat it away. He was looking that time for Vince B, and it was just knocked away by, I believe it was one of the linemen of Indiana. Yeah, it was the middle guard, Zizda. The middle guard actually doesn't even rush. He just kind of stays there and looks for the quarterback draw. Then he gets in the way of the pass. See, Dixon is blocking him. He's still on the line of scrimmage. He's not really making a rush. That's because Michigan has hurt them twice with the quarterback draw. So Zizda has been told, you hang back, make sure that you've got Steve Smith on the quarterback draw. Indiana now coming with 11 guys faking the blitz. Gavani Johnson wide at the top of your screen on a third and five. Bean cuts down. Directly a one-on-one -on -one as Bean beat Nate Porter that time, the cornerback, and took him to the end zone for the touchdown. Ray, it had to be an audible at the line of scrimmage because Steve Smith saw 11 people in a blitz coming. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage outside. Audible Bean one-on-one straight fly pattern. Lofted it up nicely. It's a little fade pattern where Bean starts about five yards from the sideline and then just kind of fades toward the sideline and Smith throws to his spot. That one worked perfectly. That's Bean with his first touchdown reception of this season. Now try for the extra point by Bergeron. Decker holding. Bergeron's kick is up and good again. So with 2.27 to go in the first quarter, it's the Wolverines of Michigan 14, Indiana nothing. Well, if you're looking for total offense by Michigan in the opening quarter, rushing 102 yards, passing 53. They've done they've done pretty much what they've wanted to, Ray. And I think that's the thing that Bo Schembechler wanted to do coming into this game. He wanted to throw some. He wanted to make sure the offensive line got some work, and they have so far. Green and Howard back, and Howard takes it just about two yards. The back line of that end zone, automatic touchback, and Indiana will bring it out to the 20-yard line. On the other hand, Indiana's offense has moved the ball fairly well, rushing 32 yards. Passing department 64. Yeah, but I think the big thing is is that Indiana has made uh, critical mistakes and that 
Rarely the quarterback is thrown twice into a crowd. We take a look at Michigan once again, using a little more time this time than their first drive, hitting a 20-yard pass to Steve Smith, keeping the ball for almost four minutes and going 66 yards. They have not been stopped yet today. Indiana defensively has got to do some gambling in order to stop Michigan. Steve Bradley at quarterback. He puts Alex Green in a motion. On the option play, pitches out to Howard. And Howard, just the back of the line of scrimmage, might have got one yard at the most. Sentry's over there to lead the way along with Hassel. You know, and you talk about quick reaction and pursuit to the ball. Al Sensich, right, plays middle guard. That play went outside the end, and he was out there on the hit. That's just real good pursuit, good tough team defense by Michigan. You think about a loop on that, or you just say he's beating his man? Well, he just he read the play, and it went on a pursuit angle, and that's the name of the game. The fullback, Welsh, in motion now. And over the middle, complete to Kennebrew. Kennebrew has the first down, close to the Indiana 35, mark it back to the 34-yard line. The throwback pattern, most of the action is coming to the right. Kennebrew went on the left side wide out and just got into that crease between the linebackers. And there you see him trying to get outside. Tony Gant and Mallory have to come over. But that's a simple little pattern where Kennebrew just comes in, finds the area between those linebackers, and waits for the quarterback to read him. Kennebrew has now hauled in three passes. Good for 39 yards. Alex Green in motion that time. And we might get a flag on this one. We do. As John was trying to break open to the middle, tripped up by Lott. over on the other side of the field, Ray, and Mike Bourne is down, injured. It looks like a leg or ankle injury. We can't tell from here. But the interference call on Lott gives Indiana a break. Bourne receiving some more treatment right now on the far side of the field as you take a look at the stats on Gunn. There's no doubt about it. As Jim referred to earlier, some of the Michigan coaches this week in practice saying that Gunn may be the best athlete in the conference. Meanwhile, Mike Horn down on the field. Horn, about two, two and a half weeks before the season started, was hurt in a scrimmage and had some knee problems and then was all right by the time the season opened up. And hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed it's not that knee again. Well, you, Michigan cannot afford really many injuries more than their linebackers for because... Tim Anderson and Andy Moeller, both backups, were injured. Now we have Mike Horn down, and it does look like they're looking at his knee. Mike Reinhold and Jeff Akers are now the backups in there. So, you know, Michigan can't afford any more injuries, and it does look like Russ Miller, the trainer, is looking at that left knee of Mike Horn. So Michigan cannot afford injuries. They, they really have had been hurting their inside linebackers score. It almost caused Bo a couple weeks ago, you remember, right, a move hassle from the outside inside to help out because of the fact that they've had some injuries to their linebacking core. The outside backers seem to be all right, but the inside backing core has been injured. Both backups are injured. Mike Reinhold, Jeff Baker's now backing them up for Anderson and Moeller, and now Mike Bourne goes down. So that's a critical position now. That is really getting to be a point of contention as far as Michigan's defense because the key to their defense are their inside linebackers. They're the guys who make the most tackles in Michigan games. Now Mike getting some help off the field at left knee. Mike Bourne, who has been Michigan's leading tackler the last two seasons, and leading the way again here in 1983, the senior out of Columbus, Ohio. Of course, as we start the game today, a little different alignment in the linebacking core for the Wolverines with Rodney Lyles did not start and we had Carlton Rose go to the outside. Mike Reinhold in there, Ray, now to take Warren's place, number 45. Mike Mallory will be the other inside backer. Hassel and Carlton Rose the outside backer. So that is really the third linebacker at the start of the season now playing in there for Michigan with the first unit. Coaches at their own 44-yard line, first and 10. And Benson goes in motion. Benson making the reception and close to the 50-yard line. Just inches away from it. A long run for him as he started in motion to his left and then cut all the way. 
way back. You have a defensive backfield for that reception to the right side. And you see the trainers working on Mike Horn's left knee. I'm sure right now, great concern for the Michigan coaching staff because Mike has been such a standout for them. And again, depth is so key in the football program. Michigan's now got to have guys come on and fill the gap. On a second and four, the fullback, or rather the tailback carrying that guy, that will be shy uh, about a yard from that first down. They had a second and four. Bradley, by the way, is now eight for 14 for 84 yards. Now you talk about knee injuries. Gary Moeller, the defensive coordinator on the sideline, just you saw him talking to Brad Cochran there. He had his own knee uh, trouble in practice one day. Somebody came over and knocked him down, and he's been walking with a cane, and they're treating him. He's the only coach that gets taped before games. Coming around is Smith. Oh, that's Gunn. Gunn on a carry. They had him at the wing back position. Hassel was up there to wrap him up. Did not get the first down. And that is not a new play for Gunn. Last week, he was uh, their leading uh, rusher. That's the end of the first quarter. We get all set now for the second quarter of play in Michigan. Leading Indiana, 14 to nothing. Sam Weish uh, wondering what's uh, going on right now. He knows what's going on. His team is trailing by a score of 14 to nothing. It's get all set now for the second quarter. Weish is a uh, record right now with Indiana. One win with a couple of losses. A punt formation by Indiana on a fourth and three. And instead, Indiana chalking some dice up, trying to go for the gamble for the first down. It'll be very close to the first down. I'll tell you, they almost lost up that play. They were going to send another player in there. They were going to send Alex Green, and they could take Jack Walsh's position. Now, here it is. The snap is to the fullback. Walsh, but watch Michigan react. That's Akers, 33, reacting to the ball, and Jeff Cohen makes the first hit. Cohen is in there on special teams. He's one of Michigan's really good special teams players on kickoffs and punts. He reacted real well to that, did not leave his post, came right up and made the stick, and if they did not make it, you can credit uh, Jeff Cohen with the, the tackle. It really stopped him because he hit him before the first down yardage. a job of planting the shoulder in there and stopping that big fullback. Jack Wolf just inches away from the first down. Well, it's a real good play by Cohen because you don't expect a team this early in the game at fourth and three to be gambling like Indiana did. And Cohen, who is not big, not as big as Wolf certainly, stayed right home, saw it coming, and made the initial hit that kept them from getting the first down. Kerry Smith in there now at tailback. For Michigan, his first appearance of the game. After having that big game last week against Wisconsin. 104 yards worth, 107 yards. And this time on his first carry, comes close to getting about 7 yards on the carry. Look at the left side of Michigan's offensive line. They caved the entire right side of Indiana down. Kerry Smith is through for 5 yards before anybody ever got a hand on him. Indiana is very vulnerable outside, it looks like, to the short side of the field. Now they get a linebacker out there to make sure that doesn't happen again. Second and three. The fullback going straight ahead. That was Dan Rice on the carry. It should have it up for the first down inside the 45-yard line of Indiana, close to the 43. Watch them cut it back over. Now you see that he reads the block. Everything's going right. So he cuts it back behind the blocking, puts his head down, levels it off, and it takes three guys to bring him down. Now that's good, hard, strong fullback running. And Rice on the carry and getting Michigan its first down. Yavonne Johnson's put wide to the right, being wide to the left. And the handoff to Kerry Smith breaks a couple of tackles. And just rambles close to the 35-yard line. And they'll mark it at the 37. Back at the 38. Now. Similar situation to what we saw last week in Wisconsin, Ray, when Michigan just ground it up, up, up front, knocking people off the ball. I'll tell you, when you're looking at the play-by-play -play stats after this thing, you'll see Michigan looking at a lot of second and fours, second and twos. And when you're a coach and you've got that many second down and short, 
you know that you're doing a job up front running the football. On the option, Steve Smith running away and should have it up for the first down. Boy, he made a good cut over there on the left side. And he was taking the linebacker, Joe Fitzgerald, right with him. Yeah, and the other thing about it, you wonder about Steve Smith. You know his speed is good, but watch the strength. Sigler, number four, is coming over and will hit him in the back. And watch how far Smith carries him. About four yards and gets the first down after he was hit from behind. Sigler helped him out a little bit with the impetus, but Smith was able to get his legs going and get the yardage before his knee hit. Wolverines at the Indiana 32-yard line, first and ten. Smith on the carry. Inside the 30, close to the 27 yard line of Indiana. Leonard Bell, a cornerback, making the hit on him. You're right, looking back a week ago, Kerry Smith, by the way, on three carries now has 18 yards, but you got to just sort of smile to yourself and say, hey, are we in great position when we get a first down and we pick up six yards? Oh, look at them now. They're looking at second and four. You'd love to be a coach in that position. Rice back in his way, close to a first down. The bottom of the pile for Indiana. It's the Foley who makes the tackle. Interior line play, trapped by Humphreys. He gets over and then real good running by uh, the fullback as he hit in there and then spun. And when he spun off, he made a couple extra yards backing up. Uh, Michigan's going to get a measurement here, but Rice that time, really good job inside after he makes the initial contact, spins, keeps his legs driving, and it's good enough for the first down. And Michigan hasn't had a third down, I don't think, this drive. Have they read? Exactly right. They have not. They have to worry about a third down conversion at all. We have not had a punt in this ball. That's where statistics will uh, screw you up a little bit because Michigan will be zero for zero in third down conversions. And uh, who needs third down conversions when you're looking at second and two all day? Michigan has picked up now a total of 134 yards on the ground. First and 10 at the Indiana 22. Steve Smith on the keeper. Oh, he almost had it broken open. Finally tackled from behind. And then there was Rip Brock to make the tackle. Brock is the junior college transfer. The key here is Smith's legs. He almost gets brought down by a tackle, but the whole right side of Michigan's offensive line just caved in Indiana defensively, and when Smith got out of the grasp of that tackle, he had clear sailing, and with his speed, he's capable of getting yardage, and here he gets at least 10. They're going to measure once more. Very close to the first down. They have it. Well, Michigan with another first down, and now knocking on the door of Indiana's 12-yard line. Smith has carried five times for a total of 44 yards, and this is the fourth first down of this Wolverine drive. You know, Ray, they beat him up so much up front here. Like we said last week against uh, Wisconsin, Michigan did the same thing with their offensive line. Now you're getting to a position where Indiana might be forced to gamble defensively. If they do look for the uh, audible and a pass, but they didn't. That'll do it. Gary Smith hitting that 10-yard line marker, and then maybe just inside. Well, they came with two tight ends, and Indiana figured it was going to be a run. Now Bo is sending in a wide receiver, so they might be going to the air here. They got a second down and about eight. They get a first down at the two-yard line, so it's going to be an interesting situation. If Smith sees them up there in a real tough 11-man, 8-man front, he may audible and go to Vincent Bean or Steve Johnson, possibly for the pass. Bean on the right, Johnson on the left. As a wide receiver, takes to the fullback, Smith keeps it inside the five, close to the goal line, and just trying to get in, but Chris Sigler, the strong side safety, hanging on for dear life. Smith looked like he fumbled the ball down there in close. Indiana thought they had it, but the referee signal, he was down. It's another first down, Michigan on the one-yard line, knocking on the door, Ray, and it has been on the ground, total domination. Fifth first down of that drive, another look at that fine carry. Well, watch number 40. He is blocked. Now Smith gets outside that block. Now it's just great running ability. Turns it up inside, gets through that crease. Now Sigler does a good job of keeping Smith out of the end zone. But 
still, Michigan blocked the play well. And Indiana calls for a timeout, but Michigan at the one-yard line of the Hoosiers. So that'll give Michigan a little chance to talk over some more as they knock on the door of the Hoosiers. With 10 minutes and 57 seconds to play in the second quarter, Michigan leading by a score of 14 and nothing. with Steve Smith over there conversing with his coach, but I'm sure that he is not going to say too much. He'll just listen. We hope that you'll listen to this one. Looks like uh, 
Indiana is content to stay with their game plan and go with the short passes. Chris Cook, number 90, the tight end in motion, was the man it was intended for. The left side, right side rather, of Michigan, Dick Felice, watch him. He'll take a little step, and it looks like he's the one that gets called for the offside. There is the anticipation. He couldn't get back in time, and the motion man comes across the formation, comes wide open in the flat, but the penalty was the deciding factor there because the pass was incomplete as Bradley was getting some pressure, but Indiana's still looking at first and five because of the offsides. Six penalty against the Wolverines for 41 yards. Bradley on a slant pattern firing complete to the Michigan 35-yard line. Say one thing about Bradley, good, quick release, and Gunn was on the receiving end. Lott and Cooper making the stop. This is one thing you like about Dwayne Gunn, such a game-breaker, and yet he'll be happy to go over the middle, catch passes in traffic. He's got two people on him, and he knows he's running into a safety, and uh, he had good concentration, held on to that football, and Indiana, while offensively is looking pretty good, they just don't have any points. On the first down, the third in this drive by the Hoosiers, first to catch. That gun again? As a tight end, I believe, or the wideout Benson. I'm not exactly sure. The numbers, 89 and 88, look so much alike on the Indiana jersey. Benson. Now watch Evan Cooper is on the coverage. Now Cooper leaves Benson and comes back to this side. That leaves Benson wide open. Nobody is near him. You see Cooper there at the bottom of your screen running back this way toward the camera. Mistaken coverage by somebody. Next up in the backfield that time as a running back Salters just about ran over his quarterback Bradley on that handoff. Well, that's the first time we've seen Salters in the game and uh, Salters was the listed as their starter and yet we've seen Alex Green more than we've seen Salters number five and when you're cold coming into a game Sometimes you make that mental mistake, you're a little too eager, and I think that's what happened there to both Salters and Bradley. Ryan Hold and Hassel for Michigan in there to make the stop on Salters. The Hoosiers now second down and, and a long 10 yards at the 24-yard line. Bradley, first time out of the pocket. And trying to hit Benson. Couldn't hang on to it. Also had uh, Kennebrew over there. They were just about a yard apart on that pattern. Now that's the kind of thing that happens when you get a quarterback scrambling out of there. Now we have Tommy Hassel going down. Uh, looks like he got his bell rung. He was in there on the coverage. But the reason there were so many people by the football race is because when Bradley scrambled out of there, the receivers are taught on a scramble, come back to the side of the quarterback and come back to him upfield. Both receivers on their pattern saw Bradley in trouble and came back to him. They came back in the same area. Castle coming off now looks like he'll be all right, but into the game comes a replacement. Colin Rose is at one outside backer, probably be Scarcelli. It is Jim yeah. Scarcelli That's in the game. Are. 19 for Bradley in the air. That's good uh, for about 135 yards. Plenty of time this time. And then Jennifer Kennebrew, a lot over there, along with Gantt to break it up. And he made that reception. And the animal been right at the Michigan two-yard line. Now, that's kind of a funny pattern because it didn't look like Kennebrew was really running hard down that sideline. And Tony Gantt is reading the quarterback's eyes here. He's the free safety. Lott's got good coverage. Gantt comes over to help, but Lott really had him covered well enough. But that's that two-deep zone where the safeties are playing, reading the quarterback's eyes, and when he sees the ball, he reacts to it. Now Indiana trying to get on the board with a field goal. Doug Smith, who failed on a 47-yard effort, will try a 41-yarder this time. As a distance, and Indiana is on the board. Has his third goal of this 1983 collegiate season, but Michigan has a lead in this ball game, 21 to three, with 8:57 to go in the first half. Indiana all set to kick off to University of Michigan. Chuck Raisman will have the kickoff duties. They send Rogers down there along with Kerry Smith. So we're seeing a couple of new kick returners in game number four this season. As far as
as the kickoff is concerned for the University of Michigan. Raismick's kick, end over end, and taken at the goal line by Kerry Smith. 15, 20, close to the 25-yard line, and a flag goes down. Kerry Smith on a good return as he returns the first one back of the 1983 season. Last year had one return on a kickoff and got no yards on it. Ahead clipping against the Wolverines. Well, that really hurts because anytime you get the ball outside the 20 on kickoffs in collegiate football, you're in good shape because most normally you'll see kickers kick it into the end zone and you get the ball on the 20. Let's see if we can see the clip. Gary Smith makes a good move back inside, and there it is right there by Rick Rogers. He clips number 31 Ford for the Indiana Hoosiers, and that's a mistake that I'm sure Rick Rogers will hear about when Michigan views the film tomorrow afternoon. Brought back now to the 13-yard line of the Wolverines. First attempt with 8.51 to go in the half, 21-3, Michigan leading. And this time, Mercer on the carry. So Mercer gets his first call. Then he gets close to the 19-yard line. Ryan Mercer, the junior out of Cincinnati. And as far as a teammate and a running back, Greg Armstrong in there at fullback right now for the Wolverines. So once again, we have seen all of the running backs, the three deep running backs, that tailback and fullback. Michigan. Interchangeable parts. Second and five. Mercer again. He likes that left side. First down across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Running over a couple of people and finally stopped by the safeties, Hendrickson and Sigler. Real good tacking. What's the left side? 73 James. There is a hole wide through there. Armstrong, the fullback, blocks the linebacker. Now Mercer's into the secondary. And all the guys in there on that tackle are secondary backs for Indiana. Two safeties and a cornerback. And when you get your cornerbacks and safeties making tackles, you know that you're in trouble defensively. You like to see those linebackers in there on tackle. Carthens in motion. Mercer on a pitch. And good defensive work that time by Indiana. Moving up quickly was Fitzgerald to make the hit on him. Uh, you notice that was the first time Michigan tried running to the wide side of the field. Indiana has got too many people over here. They don't have enough blockers. Now, Mercer's got to cut it back inside. Play took too long to develop, and that inside pursuit comes over, and that's their big tackle, Mark Smith, number 82, who's probably their best down lineman. And uh, you've got to get that play developing quicker in order to keep the pursuit away. Second and 10. And Mercer is greeted there. Wow, as he hit. Incomplete. The flag goes down. Now, they might call that ineligible receiver, but the ball was hit and touched first by Brian Mercer. Take a look. The screen, first of all, doesn't develop at all because there are so many people over there. Now, Mercer makes the catch. The ball is in the air, never touched the ground. Now, that is almost like a fumble, and anybody can touch it, I believe. I go for an illegal man downfield on that. Trying to form that screen, it was Doug James who lost his footing and went down. By that time, he couldn't get back up and get in front of the intended receiver. Humphreys was out there. Oh, wait and see now. Backing up Indiana on a little bit of a march. I think they're going to now come back the other way. And bring it back to just inside the 25-yard line. For all purposes, we'll mark it at the 25. So Michigan at its own 25-yard line. And that's, down 50. that's an illegal player touching the ball or batting the ball. And that was Doug James. Even though Mercer had the ball, it never touched the ground. Doug James can't touch. You should have probably batted it down. Even then, you get a penalty. <laughs> I don't know what you do. If you're an offensive lineman, that's fun getting that ball in your hand. Sure, it's not that many times it'll happen. Around that time, incomplete. As I had Giovanni Johnson going in the middle there, but good defensive coverage by Indiana. Yeah, and, and the thing is, Steve probably shouldn't have thrown this ball in there because the pass 
was absolutely no way that was getting through there. Kennery comes up and makes the almost interception. He couldn't hold on, but look at the number of Indiana people around the receiver. You just can't throw it in and through that many people. Bracken back to the punt. The first punt of the afternoon for either team. Sigler back there deep, but the ball will not get that far. Down on the far side of the field at the 43, 44 yard line of Indiana. So with 6.54 to go in the second quarter, it's Michigan 21, Indiana 3. Six minutes and 54 seconds to go in the second quarter, Indiana possession now. And it's on 44 yard line. And uh, thought there's going to be a quick little look at that time from Bradley and Dennis for Canabro. But somebody either turned the wrong way or they weren't thinking right. Hassel doing a good job on some coverage over there. Well, actually, Hassel was covering up the face of Bradley coming on a blitz. <laughs> Bradley took a step back, turned around, looked at throw, and saw Hassel breathing down his neck and said, No, thank you, and threw it away. So second down of 10 for Indiana. Bradley wanting to go deep, goes to gun, a nice catch. That's actually thrown a little bit behind gun. He reached back, made the catch at the Michigan 38-yard line, Cooper cover. Well, once again, this ball is thrown in that seam of the zone. First of all, Bradley's got great protection. Now gun finds the seam and reacts back to the ball. There you see Rose and Cooper there and it's just that little area to sneak that ball through and Bradley did a good job sticking it in there and Gunn did a good job holding on and reacting to it. Gunn's fourth reception good for 52 yards. Bradley to the air again and this time he picks out Benson and Benson close to the 15 yard line of Michigan. Lock and Gant in there to make the tackle. Good play by Indiana in that you see Michigan coming with a three-man rush. Now, they've got everybody blocked and double-teamed. Benson has got a half-step. Now, Bradley throws this in there nicely. Hassel's got him one-on-one. -on -one. You cannot cover a wide receiver one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. There just isn't that much speed there. Reinhold in there and out of linebacker. Heal it out. On the carry, this time it's Jack Walsh, the pullback, and gets uh, across the 10-yard line of Michigan. Cooper and Gant in there to make the tackle. Second down, and about uh, three yards for the first down. They can pick up a first down close to the six-yard line of Michigan and then go from there on a first and goal. Uh, give Weiss credit there on that call. Indiana's been strictly staying with a pass, and he comes back with a draw on first down and gets good yardage. Sends gun in motion out of the right side. Flag goes down, a little high pass with Cochran covering on gun that time. See what it might be. Michigan might come on a bit offside. You see Dwayne Gunn coming back now. His left knee is unable to straighten out. He has got tape on both the knee and the ankle, and that's why he's not really 100%. Yet we've seen him here today about 80%. He's playing very well. Illegal motion against Indiana is the call. Offsides against Michigan, probably. Offsetting penalties, right? So they'll replay the down. Right of a nine yard line. Second and three. There you see the defensive tackle move, but then you saw Walsh, number 34, at the top right of your screen, also move. That was the motion penalty, and it was Dave Felice, I believe, over there on the left side that jumped early. That's the second time he's done that this game. First down as Hassel and Cochran make the tackle. Scott McNabb tied in. Senior out of Bloomington, Indiana. Indiana tries to run a wide receiver to the same side out of that zone and take the cornerback away. Michigan's got to cover the motion man at that point. It was McNabb, the receiver, with a linebacker. And that's Hassel's responsibility. And down close like this, you got to cover a little tighter. Meredith in there for Michigan to help out with that beef in the line. Good fake by the fullback and a timely pass from Bradley. They got him 
the end zone, and Indiana with its first touchdown of the afternoon. I think it was last year or a couple years ago, I'm not sure, they scored on the same exact play. Gunn is in at a wingback spot. They fake the play action and then just run Gunn out into the open. Now, you cannot let this guy get this far open into the end zone. You've got to cover him tight. Michigan did not, and every time you let him have that much room down close, he's going to score. He's that good. Well, Gunn doing a great job on the reception that time has his first touchdown of the season. I'll tell you, it won't be his last because he is a good one. And he's only playing about 80% because he's got that bad left knee. Indiana wanting to go for two points there. They're going to try to pass their way to it. It's good. It's cut. Uh, extra point, two of them. And is that young Mr. Gunn again? It is. Gunn on a two-point conversion from Bradley. So Indiana has closed the gap with 5.15 to go in the first half. Michigan 21, Indiana 11. Touchdown and also on the two-point conversion. Back for Michigan, Rick Rogers and Kerry Smith. As Rasmick gets this one underway. It'll be Kerry Smith at his own two-yard line. Wants the center of the field, 15. Now slants to the right across the 20-yard line, close to the 22. Hey, we're seeing, Jim, I think a little more harder hitting right now than we did earlier in this game. Yeah, we are. Gun starts in motion now. Lots got him one-on-one. -on -one. He comes underneath the linebackers. And on the two-point conversion, again, it's one of those pick plays where they'll run people around in there through those linebackers, and they almost pick off like a screen in basketball. They pick off the defender. That's the play that Gun got open on for the two-point conversion, and Indiana's gambling, and it's paying off. Michigan starting this one at the tall. 23 yard line. The pitch goes to Rick Rogers. Trying to get outside. A little bit of coverage that time. And moving in there was Henriksen, the way weak side safety. The game plan called for Michigan. Trying to get as much as they could outside. And as you said, Jim, in the early uh, part of this ball game, they were successful enough that they could back inside. Well, you get Indiana thinking outside, and you get to think of flowing to the ball outside and stop that option. Then you got yourself some opening inside. You see Indiana scoring drive. Minute 39, 57 yards. The Hoosiers offensively have been impressive. Defensively, they've not been very good. Michigan counting on that again. Dave Rogers faking that time, or rather Smith to Rogers, and Smith on the carry. Coming across the 35-yard line, close to the 38. Just a little fake that time to Rogers. He was out there by himself. And again, I think the reason that play was run, Ray, was because the previous play, Indiana, was flowing so well to the ball on the option to stop Rick Rogers. Michigan came right back with a little misdirection to take advantage of Indiana flowing so quickly. Steve Smith, seven carries, 62 yards. Michigan with a first down at the 37-yard line. They're all 37. Armstrong on a carry. Cuts back open. He was really trapped there at the 40. No daylight, and then came back a couple of steps. That was Rice, excuse me. Rice on a carry. Mike Bourne leaving the stadium right now, back up to the locker room, and uh, boy, we'll have to wait and get word on that knee and find out how serious it is. Uh, it would be a terrible loss if Bourne had to undergo surgery, and of course, that's the worst thing you think about when a player goes down with a knee. Good fake. Rogers going to have to recover. A little toss to him from Smith, a little bit behind Rogers. It was good enough to handle, but trying to take off and could not regain his composure in time. Didn't hang on to the ball. Well, he had so much room outside. Smith pitches the ball early. It's a trap option, and the ball is pitched a little behind him. Rick should have handled it, but I think he was thinking about running downfield before he got the ball. You saw him turn it up real quickly because he had lots of room out there. You could see a big gainer, but he just didn't concentrate on the ball enough. And without the ball, the running back is average. <laughs> Third down and nine for Michigan. Smith bowing over the air. And a flag goes down. And a completed pass right around the Wolverine 48-yard line. That pass intended 
Corner that time for Sim Nelson. We got a flag away from the call from the official. Well, they've been bouncing Vincent Bean around downfield quite a bit. When Vincent is out on a pattern, Indiana has been grabbing and holding and bouncing him around quite a bit down there. And I think, although I'm not sure, that we might get an interference call against the Hoosiers. Holding, defensive holding against uh, Indiana, and that's an automatic first down. Mark it off and bring it up there for the Wolverines to the 48 yard line of Michigan. And first down. So a gift that time for the Wolverines. Michigan leading 21 to 11 with 2.45 to go in the first half. to go for two, gave him a 10-point deficit, and he can tie the game with a touchdown and a field goal. Indiana coming with a blitz. Rick Rogers on the carry. Rogers across the 50-yard line, close to the 48-yard line of Indiana. Rogers has been a busy young man today. Steve May and Fitzgerald, a couple of linebackers, on the tackle on Rogers. Four yards on a carry. Second down to six for the Wolverines. Rice and Rogers, the running back. And Smith down the middle to Sim Nelson. And an out of the hands. They're going to rule an incomplete pass. An incomplete pass. Just the time that he had it and ready to take his first stride. That's where he was greeted. Well, Sim should have caught the ball. Catching the ball in traffic is the hallmark of the good receiver. He's open. Steve lays it up a little too high, but Sims got his hands on it. He's bringing it down. Then he gets stuck by Hendrickson, and the ball pops loose. Raspberry rules incomplete pass. That may be a break for Michigan. Nice to have Bruce Pacha, our fine uh, sports information director, University of Michigan, stopping by and keeping us up to date on things happening around the, the athletic department of the Wolverines. And six as Rogers now goes to that I formation back as a tailback behind Rice. Smith going deep and Giovanni Johnson in and out of his hands. Almost a touchdown effort that time. And then they cover McBain to break it up. Well, this ball's under thrown a little bit now. The long ball should never be thrown short. Now, Johnson's got. And you can see he just sticks a hand up and, and, and touches the ball before Gilvani can make the catch. catch. McBain really was beaten. They should have had six on that one if Steve had laid the ball up a little bit further. Fourth and six, bracket back to punt. Sigler back deep for Indiana around the Hoosier 10-yard line. And bracket sends it down to Sigler, the fair catch, and he takes it close to the 12-yard line. So we're down to 156 in the first half, and Michigan leading by a score of 21 to 11. And we hope that you'll join us next week where we got a quite a ball game for you as the uh, Wolverines will be heading to East Lansing to take on the Spartans. Yeah, that's the annual interstate bragging rights battle, Ray, and I think it's going to be interesting for you and I both because you're a graduate of Michigan State, I'm a graduate of Michigan. Uh, there will be no fights in the press box, but uh, I imagine we'll see some emotional kids out there on the football field. Well, we certainly hope that the Spartans come along after all those entries a week ago. Back to this one, first and ten on an incomplete pass. Bradley firing out to Smith on a quick pass and a quick release that time, right around the 14, but it's incomplete. It'll be second and ten with 153 to go. Meanwhile, Indiana next week will be at home down at Bloomington. They'll be taking on the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Indiana, you know, after last week's poor performance against Northwestern, I would think that if they played like they are today against uh, Northwestern, they'd have had an easy time with it. Yeah, They're playing much better. Pitch to Solvers this time, trying to turn the corner on the left side. Gets close to the 15-yard line. Just across the 15, Gant was in there, along with Gant Felice. So maybe four yards on that carry, make it third down and six for the Hoosiers. And the Hoosiers not using that huddle. Trying to get right back there, Bradley the quarterback. And this one was in a hurry out to Johnny Sullivan. 
Lord. Now, Ray, I don't know why Indiana comes to the line of scrimmage immediately and doesn't use a timeout or doesn't use the clock. We've only got a minute and 21 left to play in the half. Now, Indiana's going to kick, give Michigan another shot with the football, and defensively, Indiana hasn't done a lot against Michigan. I would have tried to run that clock down a little bit more if I were the Hoosiers and not give Michigan an opportunity of more than a minute and 21 to come back with a football in decent field position. Good point. Rasmick is the fellow back there to punt, and he's carrying slightly better than a 43-yard average. And then throw an incomplete pass on third down to stop the clock in addition. I tell you, that was also close to a very close to a lateral pass. Good kick by Rasmick. Sends Cooper back to his own 31. And goes out of bounds at the 43-yard line of Michigan. Wise choice by Cooper of stopping the clock and going out of bounds with 112 remaining in the first half. And Michigan's got all three of their timeouts left because when Indiana, I thought in Michigan might call a timeout after their second down play to put them in the third down and then save a little time on the clock. Michigan's got decent field position. They've got a minute 12 left. They could very easily get some points on the board here, and Indiana really gave them enough time to do it. 112, as we mentioned, to go in the first half. Michigan on top, 21 to 11. And Steve Smith trying to find somebody. Goes to Nelson. Good catch at the 50. Slips into Hoosier territory, very close to the 48-yard line. Tries to inch it a few more uh, yards down there. He couldn't do it. Just Foley is the one that made a stop on Nelson. That's a real good catch by Nelson. He was in traffic there, and he held on. Second and one. And again, go on deep. Intercepted this time. And ten for Johnson. Hendrickson, the free safety, bringing it back. And he goes out of bounds at the Michigan 48-yard line, taking that one away from Giovanni Johnson. You just cannot throw the ball deep down the middle against the deep zone, right? Steve looks for Gilvani down the middle, and Indiana is playing a real deep zone, and that's the safety playing center field, Hendrickson, and he just steps up in front, and uh, boy, that's a dangerous place to throw the football. I would have liked to have seen Michigan go to the sideline a little more, use the clock a little better, work it down enough for a possible field goal attempt. Now they give Indiana 36 seconds to try to get inside to give their kicker a shot at three. Gun in motion, first and 10 Indiana. Bradley getting away out of the pocket, and again, firing to Solders, too hot to handle, incomplete. But Indiana now with 31 seconds to try to get some points on the board if they can before the half comes to an end. And Michigan gambling a little bit defensively there, coming with a blitz, sending some linebackers. Uh, Gun is the kind of guy you like to have zone coverage on so you don't get beat deep. In this situation, Indiana has shown they'd like to gamble against Michigan. They try to fake punt. They went for two points after their touchdown, so we might see Gunn running a fly down the sideline or trying to hit him deep. Michigan with that previous uh, defense. Randall checks in at one of the defensive back spots. And this one is going for Chris Cook, the juggling act that's incomplete. I'll tell you, we've seen about three or four Indiana passes over the last five or six plays where the players have had their hands on the ball, and it just looks like a hot potato. They just do not want to hold on. Well, Cook that time trying to run without the ball. He was still trying to go downfield before it even got to him. 16 of 29 for Bradley, so he's gone to the air 29 times for a total of 180 yards. And we're only in the first half. We may see him throw 60 times today, right? Yeah, we were talking about 45, yeah. 46 times in this game. Third down of 10 for the Hoosiers. Plenty of time for Bradley. And overshoots the mark intercepted by Cooper at the 7-yard line. That'll stop the clock with 19 seconds. And Bradley, that time, overshooting his deep man. The deepest man was Kennebrew. Well, you can see Michigan's defensive secondary. They're playing way deep. And again, same situation as Indiana's secondary. Their safeties are playing center field. He tries to hit Kennebrew, but there's the center fielder, Cooper, reacting to the ball. He keeps every receiver in front of them, and when the quarterback throws, he reacts to the ball. Bradley overthrew, and Evan Cooper was there for the interception. I don't think Michigan can do much with this field position. They sure could have done a lot more with their position at the 43 earlier. Cooper with his second interception of the season. Wolverines will play it cozy. First and 10, and to run out the clock now with 16 seconds for many. I think we've seen our last play in the first half as Michigan 
Run it down to seven seconds, taking plenty of time to go back in the huddle, and that's going to be it for the first half. So the Wolverines leading by 10 points as Indiana came back. They're trailing now only 21 to 11. So don't go away. We'll be talking during our halftime activities. Right now, Michigan leading by 10. Time at the University of Michigan and a little bit of a surprise. Michigan getting a little bit more than maybe they expected. 21 to 11, Jim. Yeah, having a 10-point lead at halftime after dominating early and building up a 21-point lead. I think Bo's got a few things to say to him at halftime. They've got to get back and remember they're playing football and they can't just go through the motions. Michigan had a 21 to nothing lead and they struck early with 8.58 to go in that opening quarter. Rick Rogers got the call. Yeah, he did. Rogers made a great run on a option play. Smith makes a good pitch. Great block downfield here by the tight end Sim Nelson on Sigler number four. Then the great running ability of Rogers. He makes a cut back and into the end zone. That was Michigan's first touchdown. It was easy. They drove right down the field, scored two more, made it 21 nothing, and it looked like a blowout early. But I think maybe they figured it was going to be that way, and Indiana came back. In a second quarter, after Indiana got on the board with a field goal, Michigan's lead was 21 to 3. Then Indiana went to work in the air. Indiana has thrown the ball, I don't know, 30, 31 times in the first half. We may see 60. Their touchdown came as Bradley hits Dwayne Gunn, their great wide receiver. And you just can't leave Dwayne Gunn that wide open in the end zone. He started a wing back position, came outside and just ran for the corner. Bradley threw it up. Gunn ran under it. That made it 21-9. They went for two, made it 21-11. And Indiana is in this ball game. The statistics shows Michigan's dominance on the ground, but in the air, Indiana has been able to move the football. Whether you move it on the ground or in the air, the idea is getting points on the board. Indiana has scored 11 in the first half after being down 21-11, 21-0. I think that bodes well for the Indiana team. Their confidence has to be up somewhat. Michigan's got to come out and reestablish themselves in the second half. Well, we'll find out what's going to happen in the second half after this brief timeout. The second half of University of Michigan football is brought to you by Stroh Signature, the beer with something extra. And by America's largest carpet retailer, New York Carpet World, the better carpet people. And by Highland Appliance, everything you never expected from an appliance store. And Republic Airlines, nobody serves our Republic like Republic. Our second half just about ready to get underway with Michigan leading by 10 points over a very surprising Indiana Hoosier football club this afternoon. Jim, what do you look offensive-wise from the Wolverines? I think in the second half they'll do pretty much what they did in the first half. It was successful. Indiana did stop them their last two drives, but it was almost like Michigan stopped themselves. They had a couple penalties that hurt. They threw a pass for an interception, so I think that they feel they can run and move the ball dominate on the ground. I think Bo will go back to that. Uh, looks like Indiana's covering the pass pretty well. Offensively, I don't look for anything major to change. Uh, there we see the deep men for Michigan, Rodgers and Kerry Smith. As Chuck Rasmick kicks off for Indiana and our second half underway. Taken by Rodgers at the five-yard line of Michigan. getting the lane for him. Rodgers comes up at the five-yard line. Now, Michigan does a great job of blocking, funneling everybody toward the inside. Rodgers moves up the field, turns the corner. Referee saw him step out of bounds at 30. Michigan still, though, good field position of the 28, following a good return by Rick Rodgers. All right, Michigan going to work now. Close to the 29-yard line, first and 10. And the first play from the line of scrimmage. Rick Rogers on the carry. Cuts back in there. Some good footwork, and he should have a first down at the 39. Good blocking by James that time to spring Rogers loose, but he had some of his own speed. A little footwork there. Well, I saw the hole inside. It was close, so he bounces it outside, then turns it up. And again, Sigler, who is their safety cornerback, is up there making the hit. 
Uh, I think Michigan's going to continue to do that. Attack Indiana at the tackles and then probably outside. Successful in the first half. If you can get second down and four, keep doing it. That's what Michigan has been doing all day. Garrett in front of Rogers. Rogers again. Same play. Trying to cut back in. A little better work defensive wise by the Hoosiers. Picks up a couple of yards. That was the first and ten at the 39. Get close to the one yard line, Borders and Fitzgerald making a stop, and a Hoosier has been hurt on the play. Rogers now nine carries for 72 yards. Looks like Lou Christopheli there down at the 38 yard line. Christopheli is a starter who played in 1981, and this year uh, was given the go ahead to play football after a neck injury just a week before the season started. Christopheli now injured. And I'd hate to see it be the same injury in that neck problem that he's had. In 81, he was a starter and had to miss last year. Take a look and see if we can see where Christopheli was hurt. Rodgers gets the ball, tries to bounce it outside the upper part of the screen. Can't really see him get hurt, but when he hit the ground, he was down and it hurt, so it must be a neck injury not looking at his legs, and he has had a, uh, a situation where he has had neck problems, right? That's right, George Jockey had a sit out all of last season. Wise did not expect him to even uh, come out for the football team this year, and all of a sudden the physical, about a week before the Hoosiers started the practice, and they said, okay, green light, go ahead. So they continue to work on the linebacker, a junior from Louisville, Michigan will wait. Michigan for a second and eight when they get underway again. Well, next week, of course, the big one. The Wolverines making a visit up to East Lansing, the Michigan State's market. And Ray, one of the things that's interesting about that game that we'll be doing is uh, the first meeting between George Perlis and Bo Schembechler. Uh, Bo's had his way with Michigan State since he's been at Michigan. He's only lost twice. And George Perlis made no bones about it in the spring when he was recruiting young players. He said, uh, we feel that we've knocked the socks off of our competition up there in Ann Arbor, and uh, I'm sure that they'll see some of that on the locker room walls in Ann Arbor. Also, for those people who cannot be in East Lansing, you can see the game, of course, on a replay at 11.45 uh, uh, in the Detroit area and 11.30 around the state. And we'd like to take this time to say hello to our friends out state, Traverse City area, watching these games along with Flint Saginaw Bay City, a market where both Ray and I started our dwindling careers. Of course, along on the Wolverine Sports Television Network. Nice to have you along. Well, it should be a big one, but they've got... Uh, Two quarters of play this afternoon. They're going to have to work on Indiana a little bit. Second down and eight. Second down and eight for the Wolverines. At the 41-yard line. And Smith with his first pass in the second half. Johnson out there to try to make the catch. A little bit low. Let's check it. It was Nelson. And a little bit low. It couldn't hang on to it. Steve didn't throw that ball well at all. The ball was down low. Nelson was open. All he had to do was stick it in there, and Steve just followed through, held on to the ball a little bit too much, and threw it into the ground. Third down and eight. Tailbacks for Michigan up to this point. have carried a total of 17 times for 109 yards. The fullbacks, five carries for 29 yards. Rogers in that wingback position on the right side. And Smith finds Bean at the 48 and driven out of bounds. Very close to the first down. In there to cover him up in a hurry, Hendrickson, the weak side safety. Vincent probably should have tried to go inside. He tried to go back to the sideline, standing on the sideline. Good throw this time by Steve. Now watch, he tried to fake him and then go to the sideline. If he went inside, he might have fallen forward to the 50, but this is too close, and the uh, officials are bringing the chains over to measure, see if Michigan got the first down. Wait for the measurement, very close. Had to get just about to the 49-yard line for the first down. First down! Took well, him a while, didn't it? Well, you're standing in front of your Michigan bench with 100,000 
some sand, you say, well, we might give them a dollar. <laughs> On the other side, well, who's to say? Well, Michigan for the first down here at the 49-yard line. And Sam Weish is out on the field telling the referee exactly what you thought. He said, hey, they were an inch short. How can you give them the first down? First and ten for the Wolverines, Steve Smith with Garrett and Rick Rogers. And Smith turning that corner inside the 40, close to the 36-yard line. Good fake there, but boy, when he made the corner, he was springing away. Absolutely, and that is the key to the option. Once again, down the line of scrimmage, when he sees the defender go to take the pitch back, Steve Smith turns it upfield and he's gone. There it is. The defender went upfield to take the pitch back. There was nobody inside. Smith gets good yardage on first down. Watch the blocks inside. This is what holds up all the people inside. Dixon just buried the middle guard. He even buried him so bad he got the offside guard. Going straight ahead that time on a carry was Eddie Garrett, the sophomore out of Milwaukee. And Garrett close to the 32-yard line. Might have picked up four. That'll be second down of six. You see that block by Dixon. When you see Steve Smith turn that corner, part of the reason he's so wide open and free is because that interior line is unable to pursue. Dixon buried two people over there. We saw Al Sinchich from Michigan make a tackle on the end. That time, the Indiana middle guard couldn't because Dixon buried him. And instead, the tackle, Smith making a stop. Rogers on a carry. Big hole. Finally, just hit for the turf by Chris Sigler, junior out of Grandview, Indiana. But plenty for the first down. Right around the 25-yard line. Nice blocking up front. Once again, Rogers sees the hole back over. The inside, Sigler makes a good stop, but again, good blocking by the interior of the Michigan line, opening up the big holes for the Michigan running back. They keep Rodgers and Garrett in there as the running backs. First and ten, Beans foot wide to the right, Johnson wide to the left. On a first and ten. And again, Garrett going straight ahead for his fourth carry of the afternoon. Inside the 25, just about the 23-yard line. So second down and how are they going to make it? Eight yards? A nine. Okay. Yamani Johnson wide the left out of your screen. Bean wide to the right also out of your screen. That's Garrett, the, tail, the fullback. And Rogers, the tailback, carry. Bouncing to the 20. Indiana gambling defensively and came with a blitz from the outside. Again, they gambled right that time because the crease opened up, but Rodgers got tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Now they're forced into a third and five situation. So Michigan's got themselves some work here as Indiana defensively is trying to hold up a little better against the run. Michigan been successful outside this drive. On this big third down play, they may try an option and try outside again. Dennis Edwards, the outside linebacker, making a good uh, stop that time for Indiana. Third down and six for the Wolverines. And going to the end zone and overshooting the man, Smith firing to Giovanni Johnson. Pretty good coverage that time by the cornerback, Jeff McFain. Yeah, McVeigh did a good job covering up, and that was an audible at the line of scrimmage because it was the same kind of pattern that Michigan scored on with Vincent Bean catching the pass for the touchdown in the first half. This time, that a little better coverage, Steve threw the ball a little bit too hard over the head of Johnson. But that was an audible because he saw him at the line of scrimmage in a blitz and man-on-man -man outside and decided to go try to beat him deep in the end zone and get it all in one play. Dan Decker, number nine, a sophomore out of Roseville will hold that ball for Bergeron. And Bergeron's kick about a 37-yard effort. It is there. It is good. So Bergeron has the job with a snow that time. And Michigan increasing the lead now to 24 to 11. With 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Officially, that'll be a 38-yard effort by Bergeron that was good to make it 24 to 11. And Michigan increasing the lead just a little bit here with 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Schlopey all set to kick off to Indiana. 
And Indiana sending Bobby Howard and Alex Green back there. Michigan playing with a little more intensity, Jim, than they did at the closing moments of the uh, second quarter. Yeah, uh, offensively, though, I think they're disappointed they didn't get in for six. But any points in that first drive is good. Howard takes it at his three-yard line, gets across the 20, close to the 23-yard line. On the return, 21 yards. So Indiana going on offense here at the 23-yard line. I think the thing to look for here is what Indiana does offensively to see if they try to run the football or establish some kind of a running game. Because in the first half, all they did was throw 30 times. Michigan goes 72 yards, gets a 38-yard field goal from Bergeron, using up nearly five minutes on the clock. Ball control football for the Wolverines. Let's see what the Hoosiers do. Hansley in motion that time on a keeper this time from Bradley. And Hewlett comes in there to make the first hit on him, followed up by Gant. Notice one thing, of course. Mike Bourne has not returned that lineup. No, uh, there, here's the option. It starts out to be an outside play, but Vince DeFelice got upfield and forced Bradley to turn it back inside the guards. The thing is, you've got to have linebackers in there staying home to stop that possibility. Mike Reingold in there playing the interior linebacker spot. Low pass that time from Bradley McNabb on hands and knees trying to come back to get that pass. Well, once again, I think Bradley was forced to throw a little earlier than he wanted to because Carlton Rose coming on a rush was in his face and Bradley really had no chance to complete that pass because if he waits for McNabb to complete the pattern, he's getting sacked. Indiana with a third and one on its own 32-yard line. Howard and Hansley, the running backs. Hansley number 23. The Rogers. Howard on a carry. Good block by McNabb, the tight end on that right side, springing Howard loose. Has enough for the first down out of bounds close to the 42-yard line. And Indiana running a little bit better. You watch Rhino, the linebacker, number 45 for Michigan, come shooting through the gap. Just didn't have the speed to get Howard as he turned the corner. Now Michigan is not stopping Indiana's run, I'm sure, like they'd like. Indiana did very little at all in the first half running the football. And here in the first half, or second half rather, the opening moments, they've come out and run fairly well. Hosiers picked up 44 yards in that first half on the ground. That's all they could do. Oh, all by himself, but he couldn't hang on to it. And he might have had nothing but the goal line in front of him. That pass, that time, and tenant for Gunn. Boy, that's a surprise, Ray, because Gunn hangs on to just about everything. This is a timing pattern. Bradley throws right when Gunn clears the cornerback, Cochran, and he is in that seam, overcoming from his safety spot is Cooper, but that pass was in there. Gunn should have held on, and they'd have had big yardage. Second and 10 for the Hoosiers. Bradley to the air again. Now he gets Hansley coming out of the backfield. Hassel quickly in there along with Cochran, but it was Hassel doing the job as far as the tackle. And again, a little crossing pattern underneath. Michigan's linebackers are taking that deep drop. You'll take a look. Watch. As soon as they see him go back, they are hustling back. Deep drop. Underneath comes the receiver. That is Hansley to the running back. Uh, that's a five-yard gain. It forces them to third and five, but Michigan's linebackers concerned more with the deep pass. That's why they're getting out of there so quickly. Hansley on the carry. And should have enough for the first down. Turn the corner pretty good, and I tell you, he looks like the quickest of all the backs we've seen in there. Yeah, well, the thing that's impressive is when he did turn the corner, he turned it right upfield. Now, Michigan gets caved in all the way out here, which is kind of a surprise. They're coming inside with their outside linebacker. Now, you can't, you have to have somebody out there in contain to force that running back inside into the pursuit. Michigan got blocked that time. Indiana got the first down. First and 10 at the 46. And a flag goes down, but Michigan on the fence and really pouring through there on the push that down. Mountain Rose leading the way. Nobody blocked Carlton Rose at all. He came right from his outside linebacker position, and absolutely nobody came to block him. And it's kind of an amazing thing because they had 12 men on the field. Now you think with 12 guys out there, they'd have found somebody to block Carlton Rose. Michigan, my 
trying to get bumped for too many uh, players on the field too, maybe, huh? Oh, Bo is not happy. Oh, uh, too many, too many men on the field for Michigan. Apparently, they didn't get him back off of there, or a linebacker off the field at the time. And Indiana is coming up to the ball. They're ready to play, and uh, Michigan's got a game on their hands, right? First and five. Bradley over the middle. They'll rule that one incomplete or complete. Complete to McNabb, the tight end. First down at the 35-yard line of Michigan. Mallory and Rheingold. Nothing fancy. Tight end just comes up over the middle, and, and Bradley puts it the only place that he can for McNabb to catch it. Low. McNabb went down to both knees. They got the first down. Indiana using that pass to negate Michigan Blitz. Gun split wide to the right. They use Benson in motion. And the handoff to Walsh that time. Five-yard gain to the 30-yard line. Mallory in there on the tackle. So Indiana picking up a hunk of real estate right now on the ground. I think that's the most concern to Michigan coaches, the fact that Indiana here in the second half has run the ball fairly well against Michigan, and I think that is most discouraging to the Michigan defensive coaches. Got on the left side, Kennebrew on the right side. And straight ahead of the fullback, Kerry Walsh. Not ahead, the back, moving towards the line of scrimmage. He was in motion, and moving toward the line of scrimmage might have been Hansley. Yeah, it was. Hansley was the motion man. Before the ball was snapped, he was heading toward the line of scrimmage. That'll be a motion penalty against the Hoosiers. This one back in all probability. The walk off now that should take it back close to the 35 yard line. Second and 10 at the 35. Now, in situations like this, Indiana has been going deep. We take a look at the penalty. Hansley starts forward before the snap. That's illegal motion. They've gone short underneath. Maybe they'll go deep here. He swings it out to his tight end. Picks up about 10 yards. McNabb uh, got five yards. For five yards on the pass, DeFelice and Cochran making a stop. Give Vince DeFelice a good job on reading that pass because he saw the screen and came over from his tackle position to make the initial hit on McNabb. Third and five for Indiana. It had one successful third down conversion here in the second half. Could be a big play for the Hoosiers. Vincent in motion. And Bradley on a great catch that time, a one-handed effort. And Vincent going in for the score. No flags down. Indiana made a great play on third down. And again, that was one of those little crossing patterns underneath. comes from his wide out position under the linebackers. Bradley throws it and he makes a great one-handed catch. Now in the, the great cut around lot, the defensive back comes over Cooper and is blocked by a wide out. Good pattern, good catch, good throw against the tough defense. Michigan's in a real ball game. I just saw some of those Indiana fans. They are happy. Here's Doug Smith's drive of the extra point. It is good. Indiana are really giving a battle to Michigan here with 7.26 to go in the third quarter. Michigan 24, the Hoosiers 18. Well, a little concern on Michigan's part, especially Bo Schimbeckler and his men behind him. Doug Smith stays in there to handle the kickoff duties. He's a junior out of Hillsboro, California. And you saw the score there, 24 to 18. 26 to go in this third quarter. Kerry Smith and Rick Rogers back to handle the kickoff duty. Kerry Smith almost two-thirds of the way back of the end zone and no run out. Indiana giving Michigan a real tough battle here. Take a look at the touchdown. Michigan secondary. Linebacker straight zone. Now watch him. He cuts right across the middle underneath the coverage. The linebackers are not there quick enough to cover him. Then the great cut outside. The block on Cooper and he's in for the score. Good pattern in that they kept those linebackers back and then just 
dragged a pass pattern underneath them. Indiana's passing attack, a pro style passing attack, and it's a good one. Now they put Nelson as a wing back on the left side. And coming that way on the option is Steve Smith. First down, got Daylon. 45 40. Cuts back in and right around the 35 yard line of Indiana. Nate Borders does the job of finally stopping Steve Smith. Great run, and the best part about the play was the fact that it was blocked well. Here's the option. He fakes the pitch upfield. Good block right there. Could have been a clip by Sim Nelson. They didn't call it. Then Smith uses his speed. Here I think Steve makes a bad decision to stop because he loses probably about four yards he could have had by trying the cutback. But a good job by Borders not to overrun either. So a mistake on Steve's part. Good play by the defensive back. That was his jump carry for 130 yards. That time Garrett the fullback straight ahead to the 30-yard line. Y'all getting back to that block. Nelson was wise by blocking, of course, up above around the chest area. Had he gone low at all, I think it would have been called, Jim. Yeah, I think so, too. Also, the other guy was falling down. The Indiana guy was almost on his, uh, on his way down anyway. But, you know, if a referee wants to get picky, he can throw the flag on that. But Sim Nelson got away with one. And Michigan gets the big gainer out of Steve Smith. Second and five for the Wolverines at the 29 of Indiana. Waiting for a block there that cuts back in and gets close to the 26 yard line. Wrapped up there by Dennis Edwards, the linebacker. You know, as you look at patterns developed during a football game, Ray, you see that Michigan has done very, very well running into the short side of the field. When they run to the wide side of the field, they've had some trouble defensively. Uh, or Indiana has done a better job. So Michigan may stay a little bit more into the short side of the field. Third down and a long two yards for that first down for Michigan. Rogers almost nailed. Fought off that man and got close to the first down. Borders brought him down. They had one slipping in there and almost made the tackle behind Yeah, they had penetration at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Doug James over there didn't get down quick enough. Rogers does a good job here using his strength, getting the ball over the 25-yard line. Now Michigan looking at a fourth down and a half yard. And Bo said, let's go for it. And you can see the reaction. Number 32, Rick Rogers, the tailback. Inches needed for that first down by the Wolverines. And Rogers pulls his way in for that first down. You can see Garrett moving off to the right a little bit, and it was almost a mix-up with Steve Smith and Garrett. Yeah, Eddie Garrett's route on his dive into the line was a little too tight. Watch him how he brushes Smith's shoulder. Reverses out Garrett's a little tough. See how he gets out of the way real quick. And then Rodgers carrying the ball with both hands, knowing he needs just the yard. Runs right in there and gets it. Big fourth down play for Michigan. Mark it at the 18-yard line of the Hoosiers. First and 10 for the Wolverines. Trying to add points to their 24-18 lead. Rick Rogers, a lot of daylight up there in the middle. Then it closed up in a hurry, but it got close to the 17-yard line. Once again, Michigan blocking at the point of attack is very good. I think the backs are making good decisions because those holes are opening up at different spots. Rodgers got to the line of scrimmage, saw it open up a little bit inside. Watch the cut. He makes the cut back inside right there. Good block, and then he turns it back upfield. Good decision by Rodgers when he saw the hole develop. Rodgers has picked up 92 yards on 15 carries. Comes out of the game now, and Kerry Smith checks in behind Garrett in that eye formation for the Wolverines. Second and five. Kerry Smith with the ball. Battling for that first and down. Brock leading the way on that gang tackle by Hoosier. Well, on pile, and he's very close to the first down. Looks like we have an injury for the Wolverines out there, Ray, and I believe that's one of the Johnsons. Might be Gilvani. Down around that seven-yard line. Measurement will occur while they work 
work on Johnson. And the Wolverines have a first down. Yomani Johnson. It might be Giovanni's ankle. He has had some ankle difficulties this season. And his knee looks all right. I think it is his ankle. He's had some difficulties with the ankle. He'll be coming out of the game now. Boy, injuries, you hate to see them happen. And, uh, you know, depth is so very important in a college football program. When injuries start striking you and you get down toward the middle part of the season and you're into that real Big Ten grind, you just can't afford to have the injuries to keep people off the field. The lone wide receiver, double tight end, and Nelson of Carthens for Michigan. First and ten at the twelve of the Hoosiers. Pitch out to Kerry Smith. Cuts back in. Touchdown. Good blocking from Nelson again. And Kerry Smith for the second touchdown of the afternoon. And a real good audible from Steve Smith. I'm sure play at the line. Indiana came with an 11-man blitz, actually 8-man blitz. There was nobody on the corner. Smith made a great cut inside Eddie Garrett, who threw the block to get him free to the 5-yard line, and then Carey just turned it outside and got himself into the end zone. That's a great call by Steve Smith. Facing a blitz, he went the right direction. I'm sure that he called that at the line of scrimmage. That'll make it 30-18. to 18. Indiana has called a timeout. They draw the try for the extra point. So a 30-18 score before our extra point attempt. Let's uh, pause for this message. A Bergeron has not moved out of the field, so Michigan going for a two-point conversion here. First time in 1983 for the Wolverines. Being in motion. Smith trying to get in. And the officials say no. He was down before he got to the goal line. Good work done by Indiana. That might have been Fitzgerald in there. It was. The linebacker, Joe Fitzgerald, came up and stopped him, right? That was the second time they went for two. They went for two one other time, right. I recall. Uh, and, and, and the touchdown is a good call here from Steve Smith. See the blitzing coming? Everybody's coming. Eight men. There are only three secondary backs. There's the cut by Carey to get him beyond that linebacker and Eddie Garrett through the block on number 46, Jeff McBain. Smith does a good job making that audible call at the line of scrimmage and getting the play running in the right direction against that blitz. That allowed Carey Smith the room to run and then when Carey made the cut behind McBain and got the block, he was free and clear into the end zone. Michigan missing the two-point extra try and he wanted to do that, right, because he wanted to get it back to a 14-point yep. difference. Now it's just 12, a touchdown and a touchdown with extra points, and Indiana's ahead. Well, the Michigan defense will go to work here. Hopefully all set to handle the kickoff duties for the Wolverines. They've got 329 left in the third quarter. Indiana with two men back at the goal line in Bobby Howard and Alex Green. This will be Howard. Battles up to the 25, close to the 29-yard line, a nice return by Howard, who came into this ball game without a kickoff return for the year. Real good return by Howard because Michigan had a line drive kick, really not a lot of hang time. So we take a look at Michigan's scoring drive, and it was a big drive. They were only up by six points. They had to get a score in there and match Indiana's touchdown. They did it, used four, almost four minutes on the clock, usually staying on the ground, and Michigan has dominated on the ground. But meanwhile, another Michigan player has gone down to an injury on the special team. Tony Gant, one of the defensive backs for Michigan, being worked on right now. Again, on the kickoff return by Howard. It really turns on the Jets when they got around the 15-yard line. Yeah, well, what happened, Ray, is that in here is is the uh, wall that forms. 
and Tony Gann number 14 comes in right here and you see he gets twisted around hangs on for dear life though I don't know what exactly happened he's up and running so I don't think it's his legs I just think he had his bell run a little bit another member of that special team you saw number 22 White was hanging on there and he actually made some contact with Cat I'll tell you there's you know there's Special teams, especially those kickoff and punt teams, are the kamikaze squads because they run down there as fast as they can. And they talk about football being a contact sport. It's actually a collision sport. I like I heard that someplace. That a somebody. contact sport was a social dancing. Wasn't it? <laughs> That's right. First and ten for the Hoosiers of Indiana at the Indiana 29-yard line. Bradley getting a rush that time, avoids it for dear life. And then Cohen makes the tackle right around the ankle. Jeff Cohen in there for Tony Gann, who sometimes come in when Michigan goes to the nickel. So Michigan is expecting Indiana to throw a lot. He should not have gotten out of this rush by Michigan, but he did. He's a fairly decent mobile quarterback, but the one good thing is the Wolverines react up to the ball fairly well. He had a lot more room, and it closed up in a hurry, and Michigan did a good job keeping him to just a five-yard game. Well, Rose was giving chase to Bradley that time, applying some pressure. Now Rose moves to that left side at second and five of the Hoosiers. Bradley with lots of time this time. Rose was tied in, into the hands of Cooper, and he has his second interception of the afternoon at the Indiana 45. Now well, that's what Michigan needed was the big play defensively. And you can see they're coming, counting Rose from his linebacker spot coming outside. He is blocked well, but Bradley feels pressure, moves to the left, throws high. Here's the tip drill. Evan Cooper playing his safety in his own, gets the ball, interception, Michigan gets the big play, and once again, thank that tip drill that every defensive back runs, probably till they're tired of it in practice, but in the game, it comes in handy. The former offensive lineman, when you were playing, wondered what they were doing over there, right? We thought they were playing volleyball. <laughs> First and ten for the Wolverines. 2.35 to go in the third quarter. Great field position as they use Nelson in motion. The option play tossed out to Rick Rogers. Oh, Rogers has jumped as Nelson was trying for a block over there. Couldn't get back to get his man. And Hendrickson comes in there and makes a fine stop. Now, Nelson comes in motion, and he has got to block the cornerback. Now, I think Sim has got the guy pretty well handled. Now, Rick's got to make a cut here. He, well, now, Sim Nelson missed the block. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry, but... Uh, I, you want to give him credit for it. Yeah, uh, if Rick would have cut that buck back up inside, he might have gotten some yardage. But Sim Nelson should have kept contact with him out there for that play to go. Got one yard on that last play. Second and R. And over the middle, a little bit low. That one intended for Vince Bean at the 30-yard line incomplete. Michigan, Steve missed the tight end. Nelson came across the field. Very similar to what Indiana has done with Dwayne Gunn and Benson in that they'll run underneath the coverage and kind of drag across the pattern. And he has come open on a couple of occasions. Steve is looking more downfield than his wide receivers. But the Indiana linebackers are dropping so deep that the tight end has got to come into this passing situation here, or for that matter, a wingback fullback. Dan Rice in there now as a fullback. Steve Smith wanted a run, started a run, and then was cut down with this down. Came in there and did a job, the nose guard. Good coverage by the secondary for Indiana. Nobody was open. Steve, if he was going to scramble and get out of there, should have probably done it a little quicker because he looked a little tentative when he decided to go and when you hesitate that one momentary second you give the defensive lineman a little bit better shot at coming off the blocks and making a hit on it. So that means it's fourth down and still a long nine yards to go. Bracken checks in. That's what he's done on his two previous punts. Indiana sends one man back and that is Ziegler at his own 10-yard line. Signaling for the fair catch, but that ball will carry to the end zone, bouncing in just about a yard inside. But the automatic touchback, and the Hoosiers will bring it up for the 20-yard line. Some young fans here today, too, enjoying this one. Now, why in the world would he be wearing a green shirt here in Anaheim? I don't know, but he had that was next. That's next week, isn't it? I think so. He's a week early. Sam White, the head coach in the first year. 
at Indiana University. And he's got some catching up to do for his ball club. They're down by 12, 30 to 18. With 59 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Bradley to go to the air again. He wanted to go over the middle, had nobody there. Instead, on a comeback pattern, successful for a first down at the 34-yard line, is Gunn. And Dwayne Gunn is limping a little bit. Looks like he hurt that left ankle or knee again. But I want to tell you, Dwayne Gunn made a great play there. He saw his quarterback in trouble. We talked about it earlier in the game. When you see, as a receiver, when you see your quarterback in trouble, you've got to break your pattern and come back to the ball. Dwayne Gunn was covered like a blanket by the two outside defensive backs, saw the quarterback in trouble, came back, made the reception for a first down. Bradley on a first and 10. And on the carry this time is Walsh, brought down by Cooper. Gant is back in the ball game, so that's good news for Michigan. And that uh, gain was up to the 45-yard line. Good draw play in the sense that Michigan has seen nothing but the quarterback going back and throwing. All day long, that's all he's done. So they come back with a draw play. Michigan's got their ears pinned back on a fast rush. And that's when you get hurt by the draw. Green this time trying to get outside. Cochran coming up quickly. And that'll be at least a three-yard loss. And give Vince DeFelice some credit, too. He was out there. Now watch police number 90. He is out there, and he forces Green back outside. He's fighting two blocks. Right there, he falls down. Now Cochran comes up. Green wanted to cut that back inside and couldn't because Felice was there to stop him from going back inside, and that gave him the opportunity to Cochran to get him outside. Time has run out of the third quarter. We are all set for the fourth quarter. Michigan on top, 30 to 18. Underway now, fourth quarter, second down of 13 for Indiana. Hand off to Smith. And nothing happening that time as Michigan's left side, led by DeFelice, doing a good job against that run. Same play they tried to run at the end of the third quarter. Michigan came up, Felice again fought through the double team. Got in there and tripped the runner up. He had great support coming up from Hassel on that side, too. And an Indiana player now is down. We've seen a number of injuries in this ball game, and that's distressing. Yeah. On either team, you don't like to see these players hurt. And another Indiana player by the huddle goes down. It looks like he's just got leg cramps, though. Well, they're working on right now the right tackle, Sikora. 275-pound senior out of Youngstown, Ohio. Indiana, once the injured players are up or off the field, will be faced with a third and 14. And in the second half, they have been two for two on the third down conversion. Meanwhile, a little extra time for the defense of Michigan. So the treatment continues. And I think that other fellow that is out of our picture, just about uh, 15 yards, 10 yards away to the left of Sakura. Is gone on the ankle again. But this is Sakura. They made a switch here coming in this ball game. Ginnikopoulos was scheduled to start at right tackle today, and Bob Sakura, after three days of hitting down at Bloomington, got the starting call. Meanwhile, more first day for Indiana, just a few feet away. Sam Weiss got to worry about numbers, I would think healthy numbers for his ball club. That was George Janakopoulos there, Ray. 69, the other man that was injured. He is in the game now, and uh, he's all right. It looked like he just had a leg cramp, and they worked it out. Benson and Kennebrew put wide to the left side. Here's John on the right side. One back is Wall. Season. Right to him. Ball should not have been thrown. Third down situation. Bradley goes back. He's getting a big rush from Dave Police. Throws it way too early for Benson. Hasn't even completed his pattern. And there is Hewlett, who had gun man-to-man -man for about five yards. And then he released gun 
into the deep zone, and then Hewitt reacts back inside to the flat. Good interception by Rich Hewitt. Ball probably shouldn't have been thrown, but it's a good uh, break for the Wolverines. Michigan with four interceptions so far this afternoon. One by Mallory and a couple by Cooper. First and ten, and the Wolverines now into Indiana territory across the 45-yard line by Rice on the carry. Chris Gerald, the linebacker, on a stop. Four yards on that carry, make it second down at six. And Ray, the pattern continues. Michigan is is running their offensive plays. They're running everything, well, almost everything, into the short side of the field. Indiana must be overshifting to the wide side because Michigan's been able to run successfully to the short side. Rice and Kelly Smith are the running backs for Michigan. Steve Smith on the keeper. Smith, when he makes that turn, had Sigler around him, but he picked up a good three yards after the hit was made. That's the strength of Steve Smith. You know, we know how quick he is. We know what a good runner he is. But he's also a strong little guy. Uh, he runs very hard. After he's hit, he's picked up a lot of yards. Smith has carried for a total of 134 yards. Jim on 12 carries this afternoon. And he should now, with that, be ninth on the list. At least ninth on the list of uh, in the Big Ten in a career. Rice breaking up the tackles, head down, extra power, has a first down and close to the 30-yard line. You're exactly right, Ray. That's all it was. Good blocking up there to give Rice the crease to get through, but the rest of it was on his own. Five uh, carries for Rice for a total of 27 yards. Carthens comes out of there for Michigan. Once again, AC Rice with the ball, head down, both hands on the ball. We even got a fake on the cameraman as they follow Steve Smith down the line of scrimmage. Rice at Kerry Smith, again the running backs, being split wide to the right. Now they're trying the left side. Smith somehow avoided two men and finally tripped up around the 30 yard line. That might have been Leonard Bell coming in there. I'll check it. It was Hendrickson along with McBain. Give Steve Smith credit for getting something out of nothing there because that option play was nowhere. Two people inside, and this is just Smith breaking one tackle, forcing another guy to miss, and then diving through for a couple extra yards. That's just great athletic ability for Smith to be able to do that. Kerry Smith goes in that wing position on the left side. Rice, the lone running back behind the quarterback. And Sim Nelson, a little surface catch of the eight. How do you do? Boy, he's impressive. Yes, he is, and, and, and that pass pattern has been open all day, and I think the Michigan coach has finally told Steve Smith, go to the tight end. He's coming open. Kerry Smith is at a wing. He comes and curls to the right. Sim Nelson is on the right side, comes and curls to the left, wide open, as they're in between the linebackers and the deep backs. Well, we talk about Nelson catches the day and this season, but he has turned in a fine blocking performance too in this ball game. First and ten, Wolverines. Terry Smith turns the corner. Hello, third touchdown of the afternoon. That's great running, and again, Ray, it was into the short side of the field. Michigan caught Indiana again, overshifting to the wide side. Watch it when Kerry Smith gets the football. He doesn't belly out at all. He bellies out a little. Then he's upfield. Now here's the great running ability. Fighting through and staying in bounds to get into the end zone. Good run. Good call into the sideline away from the power of the Indiana defense. Well, Kerry Smith, having quite a day to remember, got a touchdown in the second quarter and has picked up one in the third and now here in the fourth. They'll go for the two-point conversion attempt again, failing on the last one. Kerry Smith and Rice being in motion. And Steve Smith firing and incomplete. A little bit behind Carthens, who was over there on a one-on-one. -on -one and had it been on the mark, I think they would have had to. Instead, Michigan will settle for this lead right now. 36-18 to with 11.42 to go. For that kickoff now, Michigan leading 36 to 18. Slopey will do it again. And meanwhile, Green and Howard will attempt to do it again for Indiana. 
I think Shlopi would like to get this ball a little higher and get a little more hang time for his defenders to get under it. Last kick he didn't, and Indiana returned it past the 30. Throws it deep. And taken that time by Howard. No run back. Hey, by the way, on that last drive, we saw Smith running and passing. And Steve with 247 career completions. Needs only three more now to tie Leach. Yeah, and here is the touchdown, and Kerry Smith has got a huge hole. You can see it right there. Now, here's the great running. He fights off with an elbow inside, stays inbounds, and runs through the tackle into the end zone. That's a, that's a back, what a back has to do. He's got to level off and force his way through, so he stays inbounds with that inside arm. Michigan goes 48 yards and takes the 36-18 lead. But he's got in motion. Bradley, some catching up to do now. The rush is on. just fight through this block. And we talked about how tough Tommy Hassel is. Jack Walsh goes on a pattern, but this is a tackle that Tom Hassel beats. Those guys are 260 pounds out there. And Hassel just a tough nut. He, he goes through anybody and anything. And when he's on a blitz, look out. If you're the quarterback and you see Hassel coming, if I were the quarterback, I'd call another play. The lightest man and that offensive line from tackle to tackle. There's 260 pounds, and that's Van Dyke, the center for Indiana. Again, Bradley has to get rid of it in a hurry. He goes out to his tailback, Todd Hansley, and Hewlett is there to greet him along with Mallory. Michigan defensively doing a lot better job, it seems like, Gray, in the last two Indiana series. They've done very well holding Indiana to those short patterns. They've really stuffed Dwayne Gunn at the line of scrimmage. They haven't let him get free and roam around in that secondary. Third down at 17 for Indiana. Reinhold has started back in, has come back into the lineup now for Michigan. And Hewlett has come out. And this will be the 41st pass intended for McNabb that time. It's incomplete. So Bradley now 22 of 41 through the air. And last week, through 44 times against Northwestern, could get a sore arm that way. And guess who was coming on a blitz? Who? Hassel. All right. And he was right in Bradley's face when he threw that one and actually forced him to throw it early. He's not tired yet, that's for sure. Indiana's picked up, like, 247 yards in the air in a passing department. Only the second punt by the Hoosiers this afternoon. You saw Cooper standing back at his 47-yard line. And waiting for this one, Rasmick. And it goes out of bounds in Indiana territory. They'll mark it at the 44-yard line. So we've got a timeout. Ten minutes and eight seconds remaining. The Wolverines leading the Hoosiers of Indiana, 36-18. to 18. Dear Republic Airlines, I travel four or five days a week, and I'm asleep. Craig Armstrong checks in for Michigan at the fullback position. Mercer, the tailback, number 41. Armstrong is 34. It's Mercer on the carry. And boy, he's going straight ahead to the 40-yard line. Looked like he was going to be tripped up at the 45 and just kept going, and finally Hendrickson brought him down. Michigan, I'm sure now, will be content to stay on the ground, let the offensive line go to work inside. Here it is, handoff deep to the tail back in the backfield. He picks his own hole, and they're ripping off yards at four and five yards at a crack. And again, Ray, when you're looking at second and five, you're not doing too bad. Any coach in the world would love to be in second and five all afternoon. Carthen checks in. The Michigan will employ a double tight end. Carthen's on the left side, Nelson on the right. Second and five. Mercer again, just will be about shy of a first down by about a yard. Brock making a stop for Indiana. Mercer on five carries now, close to 27 yards, 26 yards officially. Has, so, it, has it seemed like a quiet crowd here today, Ray? It, it hasn't seemed like people are really jacked up for this one, you know? I, next week, you know they'll be going crazy in East Lansing when the Spartans and the Wolverines square off. And, We'll be able to see that game here on the Wolverine Sports Television Network. But today, it's just been kind of a quiet afternoon, and Michigan has had a little trouble, but they're getting it done. In one yard, Mercer will have to fight for it. 
see if they rule that Mercer was down at the 35-yard line. Got to get close to the 34. Indiana really does a good job here at the point of attack. Brian Mercer tries, but he had no hole to go through. He just is diving and grabbing and fighting for every little yard he could get on that third and one, and Michigan did not get it. And here on fourth and one, they're going to go for it. They have tried it on a fourth before, one time in this ball game, and been successful. Uh, I bet you money they run to the short side of the field, and I bet they run an action. A lot of betting on one play. We'll see what happens there. <laughs> Fourth and one. Wrong. Mercer. He has it. First down, Michigan. It shows you how much I know. Oh, no. You know a lot. I know that. <laughs> well, you know, they've done it so well. They've been successful going to the short side of the field. But this time they just decided to power it out there, do no finessing at all. And Indiana's coming with a fire game. They fold the guard around outside, and he knocks down the end. Mercer cuts it back up inside. He knows he's only got a yard, so he doesn't do anything fancy. Knocks it outside. Edwards, outside linebacker. That is Dennis Edwards, a senior from East St. Louis. I've heard on that last play, Steve Smith at the bench to talk with Bo. Probably talking about the... Uh, defense that Indiana's been running. They're gambling a little bit. I meant, mentioned fire game a minute ago. That's when they'll take a linebacker from his outside position and they'll run him right across the head of the tight end. Uh, really pinching down, forcing everything inside. Well, we've got timeout right now. 7.54 to go. Michigan leading 36-18. to 18. Injured player for Indiana, Dennis Edwards, is going to the bench under his own steam. He is okay, so it's first and ten now for Michigan at the Indiana 31-yard line. Mercer getting outside. And close to that first down. Finally driven out of bounds by Borders. Close to the 20-yard line. Now mark it at the 22. Might be just shy of that first down. Looked like Mercer wanted to get outside all the way. It was a play designed to go off tackle. But again, Indiana is pinching inside. Their outside people are working hard to clog up the middle. When a back sees that happening, he bounces it outside. There's nobody there for contain. He can turn the corner and get good yardage. Mercer down for 23 yards on five carries. And going straight ahead on a carry that time is Greg Armstrong. yards on this drive, right around 55, 56 yards on this drive by Michigan since taking the punt. The messenger guards for Michigan, Jerry DiOrio and Art Belordis. Belordis now coming into the game. Bo sometimes has trouble finding which guy he wants to send into the game with the play. Depending upon the situation and what kind of a formation he, had, he wants, he has guards, wide receivers, and backs in there, and he doesn't know which one to put in for that certain play. Smith on the option, cuts back in, gets down to the 15-yard line. I want to go back. Why is that? If he has to make a decision on which guy to bring in the play. Well, because in a situation like this, he may want a different formation. And instead of Jerry DiOrio, who he's sending into the game now, he might want to send another back or another wide receiver. Because he wants, say, two tight ends, he would send Milt Carthens in because he's already got a guard in the game. If he wants two wide outs, or if he wants a wide out playing a wing or triple receiver, he would send a wide receiver in. Depends upon the formation and what kind of play he wants to run. Depends upon what player comes in with the play. I just saw what Steve Smith has been doing on the ground. Now we'll see if he's going to do something in the air. He fires, intercepted. He waited a little too long that time. He was trying to go to Steve Johnson in the end zone. And it was picked off by McBain of Indiana. Steve Johnson was open in the end zone for probably five seconds. Right now, Steve Johnson is open. Steve doesn't see him. He doesn't see him. Now, he's covered. And Steve throws the ball, and it's intercepted. Now, the turnover gives the ball to Indiana. The Hoosiers will line up at their 20-yard line coming out of that huddle. The speedy wide receiver gun but wide to the right. And 
going to gun on the throne behind him and almost intercepted by Michigan. And then there was Bach covering on a play and he almost had the interception. Looked like a mix-up in the pattern. Dwayne Gunn cut the ball upfield like a post pattern and Bradley threw this outside like a flag pattern. You see where Gunn was, the ball was to the sideline side. I think they missed up the pattern and Gunn or Bradley, one of them made the mistake in which pattern to run and which ball to throw. Second and 10 for the Hoosiers now, still at the 20 yard line, their own 20. Plenty of time. Hansley on the reception, and he pays for it. Makes the catch just about the 24-yard line, and then Carlton Rose drilled him. And Cam Cameron is in at quarterback for the Indiana Hoosiers. Cameron the backup to Bradley, and uh, he's a, quite a story in himself in that he is a graduate of Indiana already. He is in graduate school in the business uh, school in Indiana and a former basketball player for Bobby Knight. Played a couple of seasons for Bobby's team. He was a reserve on that basketball team. He's a senior out of Terre Haute. They say in the last home game, the fans were cheering for him to come on. They were having problems. So Perry here in the fourth quarter with 5.24 remaining in the ball game. And this one to Hansley. Complete and to the 46-yard line. Gant over there to help out along with Cooper. Speed. Yeah, he does. He really looks good as we saw a bird's eye view of this one. There you see the underneath crossing pattern. And if you notice, Cook, the tight end number 90, was standing around in the middle also. And Cook was the guy who, while they say, was picking the linebackers. He came across, holds his hands up. It's an illegal pattern. It's a very tough call to make for an official because he could very well be on a pass pattern. But it's a fine line, and it's a pick-type situation, and that other guy runs underneath. Meanwhile, the Michigan trainers looking at Evan Cooper. Cooper down injured on that play. And again, Ray, injuries cropping up, and that is not something we like to see. Well, Cooper having a little difficulty coming off the field right now. Cooper's in a lot of late today. Yeah, Evan Cooper hit him, and he looked like maybe... Tony Gant fell on his leg or his ankle after Cooper made the hit because it didn't look like Evan was in any kind of a situation where his ankle would have twisted by stepping it on it, stepping on it a certain way. Indiana, by the way, with an old friend working on that coaching staff for Sam Weiss, and that uh, Ed O'Neill working with the linebackers his first year down there, the former Detroit Lion. First and ten for the Hoosiers. That pro set now. Cameron wanting to throw. Hansley, did he hang on to it? No, he went down and picked it up, but it's incomplete, ruled incomplete. He's had four catches already for 33 yards, and that might have been the easiest one to him. Yeah, Michigan again coming. They're having a, a they're playing games up front, meaning they're looping people around, and Carlton Rose had some real good pressure, and I think Hansley just decided to run before he caught that one. Picked it up on a bounce. It started downfield, and you can only do that if you're playing basketball, and I'm sure Cam Cameron could do that, but Hansley can't. Second and ten. How about on a lateral? Oh, maybe. Okay. Hansley in motion. And this one coming out to Howard. And no way to go. Cohen doing a good job of covering that time. Real nice open field tackle by Jeff Cohen. Comes out, he's got this guy wide open in the open field. Howard's a running back, and if you're a running back, you should be able to beat a defensive back. But not way Jeff Cohen did. He comes up, breaks down, gets a leg, and hangs on for dear life. And that's the way to make a tackle in the open field. If the guy doesn't go down, hold on and wait for your friends. <laughs> Third down and nine. Hansley. Shy of the first down by maybe four yards. I think Jim, the, the Michigan defense in the second half, really has reacted quickly. They really have, have moved around a little better than they did, especially in the second quarter. Well, what they've done effectively, I think, is taken away the long pass, taken away the wide receivers passing down the field. Everything that Indiana has thrown has been underneath 
linebackers, it hasn't been the kind of offense that you can get back in a game real quickly, except for the one pass they hit, and even that one was underneath. It was a good run that got them into the end zone in this second half. Hands on the carry, and he is way shy of the first down. Sent it over there to do quite a job on it. So we've uh, got a little moment here. Let's take a break with Michigan on top, 36 to 18. Here, now more than ever. Michigan with 3.36 to go, and Michigan now with a new quarterback as Dave Hall, the senior out of Livonia Stevenson, takes over. So he'll be making his first call of the afternoon. 36-18, Wolverines leading the Hoosiers of Indiana. There goes Mercer. Mercer turning away for almost five yards. And another player down. This is a little isolation play. The fullback kicks out on the linebacker, and then Mercer cuts off that block, and he saw everything opening up back inside. He made the cut back inside, and again, Ray, when you can get five yards, pretty much every time you come out there on first down and you're carrying the football, you just can't beat it. It's like we said last week against Wisconsin. If you can be looking at second down and three, second and four, you know that offensively you're doing a job on first down, and that is one of the keys for Michigan today. They've really been able to do pretty much what they wanted to do in a situation on second down. It's been their down. It hasn't been Indiana's. Harriman and Lowe, a couple of backups, running backs for Michigan, have checked into the lineup now, so they get their first call of 1983 as Lowe is going to the bench now. Perryman, a sophomore out of Massachusetts, running out of the fullback spot. And Ben Lowe, sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia. Perryman's from Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. He's a very highly touted running back, uh, fullback. He's had some injury problems early in his career, though, his freshman year. Well, they ran him in for that play, brought him back out now. And Mercer back in there along with Armstrong. Good block by Armstrong. And Mercer carries it right around the 32-yard line of Indiana. But, boy, that was a fine block on the outside by Armstrong. Certainly was. Watch 34. Yeah, you can't see him. He's at the bottom of your screen. But he knocks down Sigler there, and that allows Mercer to turn the corner. And uh, the only reason Mercer got around that outside corner was because Armstrong made the block and knocked down the defender who was coming up to force the play inside. In behind Hall now, Perryman and Lowe. Lowe the tailback on a carry. And he is moving with authority across the 25-yard line. The young Mr. Lowe using 195 pounds to do the job. Well, we're looking at the future here, and here is good running, lowering that arm and breaking tackles. He broke three tackles. One of them was on a real hard hit. So the Wolverines are showing us a little bit of what we might see in 1984 and 85. Down to two minutes and one second remaining in this ball game with Michigan on top, 36 to 18. That timeout was called by Indiana, and while we were away, Weiss had his defensive unit over there and really was talking to him very strongly. Perryman on the carry, the fullback. Boy, he showed some good, quick speed, busting up the middle, down to the 10-yard line of Indiana. Good hard running, good blocking at the point of attack. Michigan still got that first string uh, offensive line in there, at least some guys. Now Caddis has come in at tight end, but you see Perryman really ripping through there in a big hole. Cappuccino is in there in the offensive line. Cuerna is in at the one tackle. Clay Miller is still at the strong side tackle. Michigan has rushed for a total of 426 yards. And Perryman adds a couple of more to that one. On the carry, straight ahead inside the 10-yard line, close to the seven-yard line. You know, Ray, we haven't seen Perryman or Logue before this season, and I was just looking up. Ben Logue is coming out of the game right now. As a high school senior, he rushed for over 2,700 yards and 23 touchdowns and was named the Georgia Player of the Year. Also a high school All-American. 
no matter what competition or where you're playing at, that is superb, no you, matter where. You are for sure there. Mercer, just into the lineup, trying to get to the goal line, hauled down between the two and the three. As we're under a minute now in this ball game, 54 seconds. The clock stops. Once again, you see the offensive line burying Indiana inside. Mercer makes the cut at the line of scrimmage and gets down inside the five-yard line to the three. That's just good blocking at the point of attack, and I think Michigan probably has beaten Indiana's spirit, if you will, Ray. Uh, Indiana got close at one point on the big touchdown by Benson here in the second half, but ever since that point, it has been Michigan. The Wolverines now are looking to get a first down inside the five, and they do as the measurement proves them right, and the Wolverines now got four downs to get it in from the three-yard line with 54 seconds left in this game. Oh, really, Indiana in this ball game, when you look at it, till that third touchdown run by Kerry Smith in the early going of this fourth quarter. At that time, that might have been the old backbreaker. That put them up 36 to 18. That's where we stand right now. First and goal, 43 seconds to go. Perriman. Yes, sir. The youngster the Massachusetts has himself a touchdown. And they're probably cheering in Buzzards Bay right now. That's the first touchdown of the career for Bob Perriman. And he is, again, a sign of the future. Big, strong fullback, but you wonder where he fits in. The Wolverines have three fullbacks, Garrett, Rice, and Armstrong, and here's another one. Bob Perryman, who's looked good here in this final drive, along with tailback Ben Logue, a couple of sophomores. Bergeron, and a drive for the extra point. For 33 seconds remaining in this ball game. seconds to go. Michigan played now. 43 to 18. There are flags in the end zone on the extra point race. We'll have to wait and see uh, what the officials say before we can actually count that point. The official now says uh, that his head is on correctly. <laughs> And the penalty was against Indiana. Michigan declines, and the point is good. So let's mark it 43-18. Wolverines with 33 seconds left in the Michigan-Michigan State game now next week. Looks like a big one for the conference, of course. Michigan has averted uh, what I would call a great Indiana effort here this afternoon as we take a look at the touchdown by Perryman. Good blocking at the point of attack. Perryman just rolls into the end zone from a yard out, and that was the touchdown that... Really, I think Indiana gave Michigan because they had kind of broken their backs. Michigan now will get a real big break on the kickoff because the penalty against Indiana was too many men on the field. And it's 15 yards. That will put Schlopey at Indiana's 45-yard line to kick this one off. I think the first or second row of the uh, end zone section ought to get ready for this one. Are in danger down there. And Smith back, but I don't think they got a shot unless it gives it the old split effort here. Well, we're very glad you could join us for our telecast for this Indiana Michigan game. As Jim mentioned earlier, we certainly hope that you will join us for our telecast from East Lansing next week. Look out down there. Almost got the cheerleaders and everybody else. And don't forget to join Bo Schembechler and myself for Michigan Replay. And you can see on most of these. Wolverine Sports Television Network stations around the state of Michigan and all over the country, actually. And we'll talk about this one, and I would imagine Bo will be somewhat disturbed with what happened through the th first three quarters of this game after having a 21 to nothing lead. Indiana came back and got back in it. So we will discuss that on Michigan Replay. Of course, he always answers her questions anyway. I like that one about the kicking game last week. <laughs> First and ten for Indiana. 33 seconds to go in this ball game. And Cameron. Hansley makes the reception at the 25-yard line. Well, I thanks today, of course, to our spotter, Brett Bosan. Thank you very much. Our statistician again with us, Snyder. And he's kept everything official. 
Floor manager Bob Stackpool. Thank you, Bob. Second and five. Hansley again. As time will be running out. As Hansley gets to the 45. And Michigan won a second game in the conference. Smacking off the Hoosiers of Indiana. The final. Wolverines 43. The Hoosiers of Indiana 18. against the Hoosiers of Indiana, 43 to 18, after rather a slow start in the first half today, but 440 yards on the ground. Michigan has dominated everybody really on the ground except Washington this year. It's surprising, I think, because coming into the, game, the year, nobody was sure how good the offensive line was going to be after some losses of people like Rich Stranger and uh, uh, offensive guards, but I think they've done an exceptional job blocking up front. I think they'd like to see their passing game improve. More importantly, I think Bo would like to see the defense not allow teams get back in the ballgame. After opening up a 21-0 lead against Indiana today, the Wolverines let them back into a game with a big pass play in the third quarter, and it was still a game then against Michigan State next week. I don't think they're going to be able to run as much or as well because the Spartans have a gambling coming after your defense. What do we expect from the Spartans offensive line? I don't know. It depends a lot upon how well their backup quarterback, actually their third string quarterback, comes through and is able to run the George Perlis offense. With the loss of Yurima and Kolb, the first two quarterbacks, there's a lot of pressure, and how much they do offensively depends upon how well that kid progresses, and it'll only be his second start. Well, we'll find out in one week. Till then, the Michigan Wolverines will be satisfied with this big win over Indiana. They get all set for the Spartans. Now speaking for Jim Branstetter, I'm Ray Lane. So long, everybody.